We are here at Jackson Field in Greeley, Colorado. We're getting ready for a big matchup. The last game of the weekend series between the Northern Colorado Bears and the North Dakota State Bison. I'm Bobby Morrow, joined here by my man Matt Gator. And we are ready to broadcast this one for you. North Dakota State has won the first two games in the series, but UNC looking to steal one here in the third game. Yeah, absolutely. Bears on a right now on a four-game losing streak. They were on a five-game winning streak prior to going into Utah for a mid-game series this week, but now they're coming off a four-game losing streak and looking to get that turned around here today, finish this series off on a bright note. Yeah, they were looking great when they finally were able to come and play some home games and uh, had the sweep in their Summit League opening series last weekend. And as you said, they took a five-game winning streak into Salt Lake City, dropped two in a midweek matchup to... Utah and then coming back here and having some difficulty with a North Dakota State squad who is just raking the ball. Yeah, they've been on fire. Yeah, <laughs> just purely. I mean, that's how it is. Uh, pitching has definitely been something for UNC that probably, uh, you know, should, you know, they'd like to see their numbers, uh, you know, go down, I should say, because their ERAs are skyrocketing right now after this series. Yeah, absolutely, and that's kind of what's going to happen, too, when you face a team like this. They're leading the conference right now in batting average. I think near the top of, top of the conference in home runs, they are at the top of the conference in home runs. They've just been crushing the ball lately. Yeah, Logan Williams played catcher yesterday. He will be at the DH today for the Bison. He is the conference's leading home run hitter. He's up at, I believe, eight now. And he is not slowed down. He's an incredible hitter, and we saw him. Mean, he was pretty good in the field yesterday, too. All around a great player. And definitely a guy that uh, you don't want up with guys on the base. No, not at all. And thankfully for the Bears, a lot of the times that he did come up yesterday, no one was on base. Yeah. And he, did, he ended up with that one solo shot, and thankfully it was just leading off the inning. It did lead to a what turned into a four-run inning, but no one on base for that home run by him. Yeah, those power hitters like that, that's that's all you can hope for is that they come up without a lot of guys on base. And, and that happened yesterday, but that was kind of a stroke of luck. But, yeah, we are getting ready here for this game. North Dakota State coming into this one. They are 14-8, and 2-0 and oh in the Summit League. On the other side, UNC is 6-18, and 3-2 and two in the Summit League. And like I said, UNC just going to try to steal one away from the Bison here in the last game of this weekend series. And, 
and just try to uh, salvage this series as home as they come back here at home. And they're going to be away from home for a good time after this game. Their next home game will not be until April 15th against South Dakota State. So it's going to be a good road swing for UNZ after this one. Yeah, so especially, like you just said, going to be on the road for a little while. You really want to finish things off right at home. Try to get that last win. Take things into a positive note for this road trip. This uh, little two-week road trip that they're going to have. And it's to note that the the this the away the away numbers don't look that great for UNC. I mean, we'll just have to be blatantly honest here. They have one win on the road. That was back on March fourth, a five-two win at St. Louis, and uh, that's their only road win on the season. And they, of course, I mentioned their first game was February eighteenth. They didn't have a home game until March twelfth. Yeah, absolutely not. And it's not getting any easier for them on the road either. They after this, they're going to head for a midweek series at Kansas State. And they'll come back to Colorado for one one game against the Colorado School of Mines and then off to Omaha for a three-game uh, Summit League's conference against Omaha. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's not getting any easier. The Summit League is a good baseball league and, uh, of course, the first season for the Bears in it. And it will just kind of have to see how it plays out for the Bears. Well, the two pitchers going against each other today, two right-handers. It's going to be Dylan Day for UNC. The sophomore right-handed pitcher, and on the other side, a senior right-handed pitcher, Evan Sankey for North Dakota State. So those are our starting pitchers today. We'll get the rest of the lineup to you here in just a little bit, but wanted to give you those guys as we start off here. Now, something that I want to talk about with North Dakota State is we've seen the power, but what we haven't seen in this series is how they play small ball. They sacrifice bunt. They steal bases. We haven't seen that, but they haven't had to use it yet. Yeah, and exactly what you just said is what I was going to say. They, we haven't needed to see it. They haven't needed it because in that last game, they only scored in two of the two out of the nine innings that they came up to bat, but four runs in the fourth and then five runs in the eighth. That was enough to get the job done for them. So hopefully the Bears can kind of limit those big innings and we might get to see some more small ball here from the Bison. Yeah, Craig Kenny going to be behind the plate again for UNC. He had a great first game against the Bison, throwing out a few runners trying to steal. So yep. as I said in that first game, it might have gotten in the head a little bit uh, of course, not intimidating them, but just making the runners think a little bit more about trying to snag that bag. But, yeah, I mean, it, they haven't had to use it. And you mentioned the two big innings yesterday, and we talked about how the pitching for UNC yesterday was not bad. I mean, it really wasn't awful. Later on in the game, of course, some relievers got uh, bumped around, but it wasn't that bad the first six, seven innings. But that fourth inning, the four-run fourth and the five-run eighth, those two big innings, really took the Bears out of it. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back with starting lineups and first pitch. Coming to UNC, one thing that I really wanted to engage in was different leadership roles for professional and personal development. I'm currently the Director of Finance for our Student Senate. I am also in Beta Alpha Psi in the President's Leadership Program. Having all of these different opportunities across campus, I think is really gonna be helpful when I go into my career and into real world situations, and also has been super empowering. of programs tailored to fit your goals and interests meet you where you are. Flexible, affordable, online, and face-to-face. -face. Explore more at the University of Northern Colorado Extended Campus. It's only 8 a.m. and it's going to be another hot one. Today's high is 85 degrees with lows ranging in the upper 50s. Tomorrow's more of the same, plus some light wind coming in from the northeast. Coming up at 8.30, Paul Scott is exclusive. Babe, it's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. 
When you're ready to take the next step, develop skills for a new career, or become licensed in your field, join a community committed to your success. Choose from more than 100 graduate programs. Work side by side with mentoring faculty who share their research and experience so that you're ready to step up. On campus, off campus, and online. The Graduate School at the University of Northern Colorado. <laughs>
Almost caught the outside part of the plate. Umpires today, it's John Fry behind the plate. He'll be calling balls and strikes. Travis Olson is moving down to first base. He was behind the plate yesterday. Courtney Lawrence is at third base. Actually, I'm wrong there. Courtney Lawrence called balls and strikes yesterday. Rotation went the other way. It's all the same. It's all the same. They're out there. They're still making plays, right? Or calling plays. One and two. Two outs. Dylan Day looking for a quick first. Swung on, fouled off down by the street. Ooh, there's a Mercedes down there. Watch out. Yeah. Got to get off that street. I don't think I'd be parking that car there. So in the first game of the series, we saw an absolute rout by the Bison. Ended up being 20-3. to three. This one's grounded, and Kubo in the shift hard. I mean, he was way over in the shift. He was almost directly behind Josh Klein yeah, at was, first. Yeah, that was interesting. I was a little surprised to see him shifted that far over and not see Cam Cromer more over to the second base side. Yeah, Cam was still on the left side of second base, so he didn't go quite as far as you would think he would with how far Kubo was. But regardless, there is your first hit of the ball game for the Bison. A two-out single, and that brings up the big bat of Logan Williams. Eight home runs on the season. He's at two in this series, and he leads the conference in RBIs and home runs. He was behind the plate yesterday, but DHing today as he did in the first game on Friday. Dylan Day out there, 6'5", 195 as he goes for a pickoff move, but a little too late. Just keeping him honest over there. You know, Dylan Day, if I remember right, he has that good pickoff move. We saw him pick off two batters last weekend in their series. He absolutely does. Yeah, if you get if you get just a shade too far off that base, watch out. That one's fouled off back behind the home dugout. Yeah, he came in in relief in the Saturday game picked someone off, and then started on Sunday and picked off that same runner, so he was able to get him twice. <laughs> he was, yeah. I don't think that runner thought about running again. No. That'll definitely slow you down. And, you know, he's throwing over there, if it's to first base, to Josh Glenn, who has just been doing a fantastic job at first base, played a great defensive game yesterday, and, uh, you, you know, well, he's only been thrown two once, but he made the stop at least. Yeah, he did. He's been doing a great job, like you said, over there. Usual catcher, but... Taking these games at first base, trying to limit the contact. He was getting beat up a lot behind the plate. He was. Trying to, as the strikeout goes there, just trying to keep Glenn's season going out stronger. But, yeah, that was a nice inning there from Dylan Day, stranding a runner and striking out the batter for the third out. So it's nothing, nothing as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Bears coming up after this. As a first-generation student, I didn't even know if I was going to come to college in the first place. When I talked to my parents about it, I was like, I'm going to go to college. Diversity and inclusion here on campus is very strong. The cultural centers were very welcoming, and they were the ones to really push me and be like, go get involved. UNC gave me the confidence, the self-advocacy, the motivation to do bigger things and reach and have bigger dreams. That sweet morning dew, oh, one look at you, and it was plain to see that you were my destiny. I will go where you lead, I'll be right there in a time of need, and when I lose my way, you'll be right there. Back here for the bottom of the first, and out there on the mound, you see him there. That's Evan Sankey, 555 ERA, 2-2 two and two record on the year. He's started five games, and he's only appeared in those five games. 24.1 innings pitched this year, 34 hits given up, 18 runs, 15 of them earned runs, 8 walks, 15 strikeouts, and here's something that's bright for the Bears. He's uh, averaging a 324 average for his opponents. So that's the best that the Bears are going to see for uh, out of these pitchers they've seen this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. They faced a lot of good pitchers this weekend, and Sankey really no different, but he does have a higher batting average against, so Bears hopefully looking to take advantage of that today. And We're going to take a quick second to look at their lineup. Not much different from what we've seen so far this weekend. Leading things off again, it's going to be number 29, Jake King, followed by in the two-hole by number five, Shaden Kubo, 
Batting third, number four, we have Josh Glenn. In that four hole batting cleanup, number 24, Cade Moeller. Batting fifth today, number 30, Lincoln Turner. Batting sixth, number two, Chase Cromer. And batting seventh, number 22, Craig Kenny. In the eight hole, number one, Cameron Cromer. And rounding things off, number 19, Hayden Hines, batting ninth. We talk about it every game. You love Hayden Hines down there in the nine hole, though. Absolutely. And Jake King going four for four today. Jumped above Hayden Hines a little bit. Brought he his did. average up to 333. And now Hayden Hines is only sitting at 329. Oh, must be rough. As there you go. Oh, oh. nice. <laughs> nice catch out there by Peter Brookshaw. Thought that ball had a little bit more zip than it did. But one pitch, one out for Jake King there as he's going to take the walk back to the dugout that brings up Shaden Kubo second baseman today hitting 261 on the year three home runs 14 RBIs and he's come around to score 14 times as well stepping into the right-handed batter's box wouldn't mind to see his power surge come back a little bit yeah could definitely use that today just one for five on the day yesterday for Kubo he did have that uh, fielder's choice, though, that he yes. busted down the line and broke up the double play, and that helped out the Bears. A uh, run, run, score. run came in on that one, yeah. 2-0 to Kubo. That's just one of those things that never is going to show up on stats. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, th those hustle stats, you like to call them, you know? Oh, Kubo gets into that one. That one's going to go deep. And there you go. How about it? He asked for the power to come back. Hey, fuck. 5'8", 165. That's a power hitter in my book. one nothing Bears. That is, that is exactly your prototypical power hitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, second baseman, 5'8", 165. That's his fourth home run on the yeah, year, you know, man. With that, tied for, the, tied, tied for the team league in home runs. <laughs> oh, exactly uh, how I would have called it coming into the year. Should have put a future on that or something. My goodness. You think Josh Glenn wants to stay tied with him? or I don't think he does. I think I think Glenn wants to hop ahead right here. <laughs> well, you know, I liked it better when I had the home run lead by myself. Yeah. So there you go. That brings up Josh Glenn. 273 hitter, four home runs now. You know, he's tied with Kubo uh, with that. And 19 RBIs. That's, that is a team lead. Breaking ball comes in low. You know that's a way to to get it started. You know we we had a we had a bottom of the first scoring yesterday as well. A little different. You know it was King with the double and he came around to score, but that's some fireworks to get it started. Yeah, Kubo wasted no time there. He saw a two-zero pitch that he liked and just drove it out to left field. Good pitch there. Glenn probably wants that one back. Two-one. Yeah, that was a good-looking two-zero pitch there as well on Glenn. Yeah, Glenn, so happy to see him back out there. Missed three games. Came back in, as we said, usual catcher. In fact, he is, I mean, really the catcher he has been uh, for the Bears this season. But was getting beat up back there. And head coach Carl Iwasaki wants to make sure that he's in there for most of the season as swinging and going down is Josh Glenn for the second out of the inning. So making that move over to first base for a little bit. And he's a more than competent first baseman, so not like you're trading off a lot of uh, – you know, a lot of talent there. And we have uh, Craig Kenny behind the plate. Great catcher as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think any time, almost most catchers, I feel like, can play first base because you get so used to blocking the ball mm -hmm. as a catcher that you're going to have just naturally be able to scoop as a first baseman. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. As uh, Muller turned to try to lay down a bunt, tried to pull it back, but it was a strike anyway. Yeah, I just caught the top portion of the plate. Interesting tactic. Two outs and not exactly a speedster. Saw the corner infielders were playing back, maybe. Yeah. Maybe might have had a chance there. One and one after the appeal down to first. Never really going to expect your four-hole hitter to <laughs> no. lay, lay down a bunt with yeah, two outs and no one on. Yeah, that, that'd be a surprise to the infield, I bet, as well. You see the third baseman, yeah, still backing up over there. And, ooh, that one just broke out of the zone on the bottom there to make it two and one. Yeah, that looked like a great off-speed pitch there. I swung through my shoes, I can tell you that. I would have been, I just swung right through that. Swings through that one. Foul tip, make it two and two.
So two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the first. The delivery swung on and missed, and that's how we'll end the first inning. One run comes across on the big bomb from Shaden Kubo. Flying Hawaiian is uh, more of a power hitter now, so we've got to find a new uh, nickname for him. Anyway, we'll work on it. Yeah, we'll work on it later in the break. We'll be back with the second inning coming up after this. Imagine yourself on a college campus. Make it a Division I university. Add the very best professors and some of the top-ranked residence halls in Colorado. Now think about your dream career, that thing you've wanted to do your whole life. Imagine learning it and doing it right here. You've just imagined yourself at the University of Northern Colorado. Apply today at unco.edu. We're here for the ones with big hearts, the ones with big calluses, the ones who go the distance, the ones holding down the fort, the weekend warriors, the crafty ones, these crafty ones too, and the ones just being themselves. Here's to the ones who define the Colorado spirit. We're proud to be the community bank that helps them live that way. Because we're not just a bank in Colorado. We're Bank of Colorado. There's only one. Second inning coming your way. Dylan Day out there. Just finishing up his warm-up pitches. He has a lead out there. Second inning. Not bad to have. Yeah, anytime you can go out to the top of the second inning with a lead, you've got to love that as a pitcher. Goes also mentioned that Dylan Day is... ERA wasn't where he wanted it, but he's really been bringing it down with some great outings. Absolutely. I would say his last three outings, he's done a really great job. Yeah, I mean, this this is no lineup to look over, though. We know he's been doing great, but if there's a lineup that's going to do it, it's going to be this one, if we're being yes. completely honest. Yes, I mean, it is. We can't be home, too bad of homers here on this broadcast. But, yeah, so uh, stepping in, Jack Simonson now, he had a pretty good first game of the series. Yeah, you know, not, not a bad day when you can go out there and hit two over the fence. One of them a grand slam. Yeah. Yeah. He had a good day yesterday, too. A double, a single, got on base a few times. I believe he worked a walk in there. Yeah, two for four with a walk. One and one count to him. Came around to score once. Five hole hitter leading us off in this one. And yeah, as you were saying, this North Dakota State lineup is just phenomenal. So if Dylan Day can find a way to keep things going here today. The way that, same way that he has these last couple of games, I think he's primed to have a real good rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, most definitely this lineup top to bottom is one of those that you don't get a break. No. You know, there, you know, a lot of lineups you'll go through and maybe the six through nine or seven through nine guys, you're, okay, this is, a, you know, these guys can't crush me. Yep. Everyone on this lineup can hit bombs. Absolutely. And they proved that on Friday. They most definitely did. Is that is a walk to lead off the inning. Simonson gets on. Drew Sackett going to step in. Sackett, 259 hitter coming into today. Seven RBIs and two home runs for him. One of those coming in this series this weekend. Had some good pitching from the Bears yesterday, especially in the middle innings. Able to neutralize this lineup. It was a tie game heading into the eighth inning, but then the offensive explosion from the Bison in the eighth really broke it open, that five-run inning or five run inning. Yeah, send all nine batters up to bat. It'll bring across five. That'll do it for you. That one comes in inside for a ball. I'll tell you, though, if there's anybody that uh, Dylan Day should be talking to about pitching to this lineup, it'd probably be Owen Lochner. Reliever pitched yesterday as a throw down, attempted steal, and got him. How about Craig Kenny in this series? Three for three. I mean, and we mentioned this is a team in North Dakota State that, that coming into this series, they were ranked 13th in the nation in stolen bases with 45 total, 15th in the nation with stolen bases per game at 225. Uh, for him to throw out all three who have attempted, that's impressive. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Good pop time, good arm strength, and his accuracy has been pretty good. Kubo, Kubo is also, give credit to him, he's also able to just throw some crazy tags down. He has been. 
That one outside. Three and one. But hey, one out in the inning. That negates the leadoff walk. It does. Getting back to what I was saying, though, Owen Lochner came out of the bullpen yesterday and just was terrific. Uh, he really neutralized this lineup. And, you know, just a freshman being able to do that, first of all. And just an incredible day for him. So, if anything, I would – if I'm in the bullpen over there for the Bears, I'm, hey, Lochner, what did you do, man? What was it? What'd you, how'd you keep him off balance? Yeah, middle of the game, he went three innings pitch, didn't allow a run. Had a great day. This one fouled back behind us. Full count, one out. Will Bush is on deck. We will see him. That one, strike three on the outside corner. Dylan Day getting the strike out there. Big one. Get the second out in the inning. Second strike out of the day there for Day. Brings in Will Bush, catcher for the Bison today. 280 average, eight RBIs, two home runs on the year. He's come around to score himself ten times. And if you're Day, I mean, you really want to try to get Bush here because then the next inning you would have the eight-hole Huggins, nine-hole Hesse, and then the leadoff hitter would, would come back on, uh, it, you know, obviously in the three-hole. So you don't want to have the leadoff hitter coming up too early next next at bat, but or next inning, I should say. But we did say how there's really no holes in this lineup anyway. No, there's not. But still being able to prevent them from turning this lineup over as often as possible is going to lead you to having more success. Well, the big thing is uh, Callan Schwabe not down there. We mentioned that. Yep. He's not down there in the nine hole today. 333 hitter. Instead, it's Charlie Hesse down there, a 222 hitter. This one swung on and lined foul down the third baseline. 2-2 two -two count, two outs here in the second inning. Day looking to get a quick one here. This one sent into right field, and that will go to the wall. It'll be a double, as this one is brought in from King. So a two-out double from Will Bush, keeping the inning alive for the Bison. Good piece of hitting there by Bush, just being able to poke that one into right field and it's far enough away from King, rolls all the way to the wall. I love opposite field hitting. Yes. Love opposite field hitting. Left fielder number one, Terrell Huggins. Terrell Huggins stepping in. Be out there in left field today. Got the start yesterday. We didn't see him on Friday. 245 hitter. Got a three-run home run yesterday. Two of them on the season, 10 RBIs. Day checking the runner. Big secondary lead out there. And this one popped up into left field and drifting is Hines in center. He'll bring it in for the third out. Stranding one runner again is Dylan Day. Still a one nothing ball game. Bears on top heading to the bottom of the second. We go to the bottom of the second inning. It's the Bears one, the Bunker. the second inning it'll be Lincoln Turner Chase Cromer and Craig Kenny getting it started for the Bears Evan Sankey still out there 14 pitches to get through the first inning including two strikeouts 
Yeah, he really did a good job in that first inning. Just gave up that, that one pitch that he kind of left up there for Kubo, able to send it out of the park. But outside of that, he did a good job with those other three batters. Yeah, and you saw it well. We got the camera on our hitter there, Lincoln Turner. But that last warm-up pitch came in blazing from Sankey. I haven't seen that fastball, I don't think, from him yet. Not that fastball, no. at least. You know, Lincoln Turner leading things off this inning. I'm looking for him to have a big day today. Last time we saw him here at home, it was that pinch hit situation. He got that walk off. Hasn't been playing a ton for a senior, so I bet getting the start today, he's looking to really have a good day and try to turn things around for him. Excellent point. Yeah, senior out there. Doesn't get a ton of playing time. Batting 276 on the year. That one outside called a strike. Saw a lot of that yesterday. Yeah, we did. Courtney Lawrence has a wide strike zone. Of course, today we have Fry out there behind the plate, calling balls and strikes. That one a ball, one and one. But yeah, Lincoln Turner. I mean, we've seen him. We haven't seen a ton of him, but what we have seen, it's it's been it's looked good. He had, you know, like you said, he had that big walk off hit. Yep. His last time playing here at home and getting the start today. He started the. A few games in the very first home series again uh, against Mount Marty's. He's down one and two. That breaking ball sent the other way, flying high towards the scoreboard. Center fielder will call off our man out there, and that's uh, Schwabi putting away the first out of the inning. A little poke out to the opposite field. Not too bad. No, not at all. Just got a little bit under that one. Yep. And now Cromer number two stepping in. Chase Cromer hitting 282, one home run, eight RBIs. And he, just like his brother, Cameron Cromer, who we'll see in just a little bit, I mean, I, I love these guys. They are contact hitters. And knock on wood here. I've had a few of these this series, so hopefully I don't, I don't jinx anything. They don't like to strike out. No, not a ton of strikeouts coming from either one of them. They're going to put the ball in play and. Even in the worst case scenario, ground out to the infield, it's going to be a close, close yeah, play at first. They they make every ground ball a close play, and we saw it yesterday. Uh, Chase Cromer beating beating a, uh, a an infield single out. Yep. Breaking ball in there for a strike one and two. You got it, you got it. Of course, Cromer number two plays shorts or plays third base, I should say, and Cromer number one plays shortstop. Swing and a miss, and mark it up. That one's that's my bad. That's I'm I'm uh, dash one. You guys can't see it, but I'm staring him down. That yeah, one's on him. That's on me. Two outs after the strikeout of Cromer, and Craig Kenny gonna step in. He was the lone bright spot in the Friday loss for the Bears. He had a home run and a double, the only two extra base hits, and two of the only four hits that the Bears had as a team. Two hundred batting average. He's raised that up during this series, which is crazy because of the pitching he's been facing. Yeah, he's been doing a great job with the bat. You know, normally doesn't get the starts at catcher, so getting those these in this whole series, kind of getting more consistent playing time. Sends this one to shortstop and across the diamond, the throw from Brookshaw, and that is the third out here in the second. So we have third inning coming up. It will be Hesse, Anderson, and Schwabi after this. When you're ready to take the next step, develop skills for a new career, or become licensed in your field, join a community committed to your success. Choose from more than 100 graduate programs. Work side by side with mentoring faculty who share their research and experience so that you're ready to step up. On campus, off campus, and online. The Graduate School at the University of Northern Colorado. It's only 8 a.m. and it's going to be another hot one. Today's high is 85 degrees with lows ranging in the upper 50s. Tomorrow's more of the same, plus some light wind coming in from the northeast. Coming up at 8.30, all kind of squeezed. Babe, it's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. One to nothing, the score right now, as we are back here at Jackson Field in Greeley, Colorado, for the top half of the third inning. Dylan Day right now allowed two hits, no runs come across. 
sitting at 35 pitches through two innings. Yeah, and the only problem there is he's, you know, not going to say his pitch count is high, but 35 through two, probably not ideal, but I'm not going to say it's high. No, it's not high, but it's a decent amount of pitches. Yeah, just something to keep an eye on. He'd like, you know, if he can get a quick one here or maybe a quick one there in the, in the fourth inning, then back on track. Yeah, but you know what? As long as you can keep runs off the scoreboard with this team, yep. I don't care how many pitches you take to do it. And I don't think Kali Iwasaki will either. Nope. Last game of the series, just, you know, we, we can go through yep. the bullpen a little bit now. First pitch swinging, sent out to Hines, backing up at the wall, and gone. Charlie Hesse sends that one deep into center field, and we are tied at one. So one pitch here in the top of the third, and we are all tied up. Not the start we were kind of talking about right there for today. No, that's the last thing you want there. Lead off home run, but you just right now have to look at it. Fresh start, top of the lineup, third inning. Get things going again. Back to the top of the order. You know, that ball by Hesse didn't seem like it was hit all that hard. I thought Hines was going to have a chance to make the play on it, and then he got to the wall and was still looking up like, uh-oh. Yeah, Hines was tracking it. One one on that pitch. So yeah, Brock Anderson, and he's over one. That one low for two and one. Fouled back, right at us back here. UNC can't miss them out there. They're in their bright gold tops and white pants. Navy caps. Bison in their grays with NDSU in green on their chest. And down there to Glenn, no problem for him. That's a catcher. He's used to yep. uh, he's used to those coming flying at him. Yeah, he just got down into his little catcher stance he, there. He did. Made, made the grab. Got in the squad. That felt comfortable for him. Easy play. Center fielder number 19, Caden Schwabe. Caden Schwabe stepping in. Big breaking ball. Tries to get the top of the zone. Can't get it. This one popped way up high. Checking for it is Kenny Cromer coming in from third base, and he'll call off Kenny and bring it in for the second out. And love to see that, too, because I know that Kenny could have made that play, but it's so much harder for a catcher with their catcher's mitt, all the gear on to make those plays. Just any time an field, infielder can come in, make the grab, normally going to go a lot more smoothly. I mean, I'm always impressed by catchers who can just throw yes. their mask away and make it look easy. Yep. Because people forget that there's a combined about three inches of padding on that glove that no other glove has. Yes. It makes it a little more difficult to catch pop flies. Cromer trying to take a look at this one, but that one's too far foul this time. Missed all the cars out there on the street. Lucky for them. Looks like we have a few fans out there in a truck bed hanging out and uh, watching the game. Got a few couches in their truck bed. I like to see that. That's a fun spot to watch the game until there's and, foul balls. Until that a way. foul ball breaks your windshield. It's like you know, I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna park somewhere else and watch from the stands next time. There you go. One one count, two outs, top of the third. One one delivery, breaking ball, fouled off. Might have caught the umpire back there. Looks all right, though. One and two count now. Brookshaw up. He's one for one. Had that, that double. Sends this one down and almost the same exact hit. Or pardon me, no. For his first hit was a ground ball where Kubo was in the shift. My mistake. Well, this is a single, no, no matter what, out into right field. King gets it in quickly to keep him at first. 
batting is designated hitter number five, Logan Williams. And Logan Williams stepping in. And something that we've seen plague the Bears all season long is just not being able to get that third out. You know, pitchers can get those first two quickly, but that third one has been elusive almost every inning, it seems. Damage comes. 1-0 count. Man on first. Logan Williams up. Nice breaking ball. Kind of buckled Williams there. Williams struck out in his last at bat. Not something that we see a ton from him so far in this year, so probably not going to see that again here. He's looking to put the ball in play, do something with it. Hey, that one got you. That one, that got, one that, got you. That one got me a little bit. <laughs> that one got me a little bit. Oh, I moved a little bit too. I can't lie to you. Well, that makes it one and two. That's the that's the first one on the year. We hey we 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 both had a pretty good game yesterday. Though. Yep. We were, we were both statues back here. That one coming in high, two and two. Put my hand up like I was ready to catch it. Barehanded <laughs> would not Bare have been able to do that. No, no, it wouldn't have been fun either. So two balls, two strikes, two outs, man on here. Top of the third as this one's right back to Dade. Kubo diving out, can't get it. Picked up by Hines and he'll get it in quickly to third base and. I tell you, he hasn't had the chance to do it yet, but Hines, I mean, he has an arm out there. I mean, this guy has a hose. Yeah, that throw into third was an absolute – it was on a rope. Yeah, he can he can get it in, and I, I guess there must be a scatter report on him because nobody really runs on Hines. Nope. Can't blame him. No. So a single there will keep the inning alive for the Bison. Brings in Jack Simonson. Walked his first time up. As two ducks on the pond for him right now with two outs. Day taking a long look in, getting his sign from Kenny, checking the runner at second. And that one didn't look too bad. I don't think Kenny was able to hold on to it, though. That might have affected the yeah, call. Yeah, maybe just a little bit low there in the zone. And, you know, day after giving up that leadoff home run, he was able to get back, get two quick outs, and just looking to find a way to get out of this inning. Bison creating havoc right now with two outs. Again, just something the Bears have been having to work through this season. That one was in there for a strike, one and one. Going back to that dropped pitch on the first pitch, that's something that you do lose when Glenn isn't behind the plate. Yep. His framing is spectacular. Absolutely. Probably get a lot of those borderline pitches. Yeah, and yeah, I bet he's over there taking the taking the throws at first base, even framing them a little yep. bit. It's just a second nature now. It's habit. It's built in. This one poked out into right center, and nobody's going to get to this one. Bounces up on the wall. Two runs will score for the Bison, and they're going to hold Simonson at second. A two RBI double. As Williams and Brookshaw come around to score, it is a 3-1 ball game here. Bison take the lead. That ball hung up there for a while in right center field, but it was just right between Hines and King, and neither of them able to get to it as it went all the way to the wall. Yeah, perfect gapper right in between them. And again, it's, the, it's these two-out rallies yep. that the opponents get against the Bears. And that's got to be tough to to try to coach through. I mean, it's all, it's really mental. Just, Hey, stay in the game. You know, you still have one out to get, but of course, easier said than done, especially against this lineup. First pitch outside drew Sackett steps up. He is over one with a strikeout. Checking the runner is Day. Kubo out there kind of messing with him, too. That one, ooh, just a little outside for a ball, 2-0. and oh. Now, this is probably, this weekend has probably been the coolest weather North Dakota State has had to play in all year long because they've been down in Florida and on the coast. Nice games down there. Won't get into it right now because there's two outs in the inning, but, you know, there's a 
special situation for North Dakota State. Yeah, yeah, there is, and we can talk about that later on in the game, but I'm sure when they do get, because I haven't had any home games yet, but yep. I'm sure when they do start to have those home games, they'll, they'll definitely have some colder games. <laughs> yeah, still, I think they're just barely cracking the 60s up there in Fargo. You know, Sackett right now in a 3-0 count, l tied for the team lead in uh, walks. First base is open, won't need it quite yet as Day delivers a strike down the middle. For second, also time for tied for the team lead in strikeouts. Huh. So, yeah, a little interesting. interesting there. Not often you see that, but he flies this one out into right field, and King coming on will make the grab, and that's the third out. Cameron Cromer, Hayden Hines, and Jake King are going to bring us back for UNC after this. It's within us to want to explore, discover, connect, succeed and if we start in a place that welcomes encourages inspires we'll find community and new ways to make the world better explore more at the university of northern colorado <laughs> Playground. Back here, getting ready for the bottom of the third, a 3-1 ball game. North Dakota State had a three-run inning in the top half here, and they took the lead. And I have to apologize to you out there. The home run from Shaden Kubo threw me off, and I never gave you the defensive lineup for the Bison out there. Well, out on the mound, you already know him. It's Evan Sankey, and his battery mate is Will Bush today. Out there at first base, it's Brock Anderson. Drew Sackett at second base. Shortstop is Peter Brookshaw, and at third base, Charlie Hesse. Terrell Huggins out in left field, and Caden Schwabe is patrolling center field. Jack Simonson out in right. There we go. Got to make sure I take care of that stuff. Cameron Cromer leading it off, 257 hitters. He steps in from the left side. Cromer number one, as we affectionately call him. Oh, Some wearing number nine. Unless I he's wearing number nine or, or 41. 41 yeah. yep. This one grounded down to first base, and that will just hop foul. Bears right now with Cromer leading things off, followed by Hines, have a great chance to get things going with, with the speed that's potentially coming up on the bases. Yeah, Cromer, terrific speed, great contact. Hayden Hines, one of the best four average hitters on this lineup. And then they'll turn it back over to Jake King, who's been having a day. But Cromer gets into this one, sends it deep into right field, and it lands just in front of the 356 sign. Leadoff double for Cromer number one. That's exactly what they needed to start. I thought that ball was going to have a chance to get out. He turned on that one. He did. That was a quick turn. Right in front of that 356, that had to have landed at like 354. I mean, he was yeah. just short. Yep. And that brings in our center fielder today for the Bears, Hayden Hines. 329, nine hole hitter. And no, that is not a small sample size. No, only person on this roster, now that Glenn had to miss those last few games, that has started and played in every single game for the Bears. And he is strategically placed in the nine hole by head coach Carl Iwasaki to try to turn over the lineup. And a perfect opportunity right here to try to cash in and make that, that uh, strategy come to fruition for Carl Iwasaki. Started with an 0-1 count to Hines. Speed on second, checking the runner and delivering. Breaking ball comes in for a strike, 0-2. Good-looking pitch there from Sankey. It's 
So you have Hines up now, and you have Jake King on deck. He went, you know, four for four with the walk, as we mentioned yesterday, and he hit a ball on the screws in his first at bat, but it was just just able to be picked up by Brookshaw at uh, shortstop. Yeah, and Brookshaw was shaded a little bit that way too with the lefty and King, and able to come up with the play. I think we both off the bat thought it was definitely going to be a hit. Yeah, I thought that was center field straight there. to center. Yep. Big hole here on the left side as Brookshaw is covering the bag behind Cromer. He'll back off now, and that one outside, even us up at two and two. Yeah, a bit unorthodox with the right-handed batter that you're going to have the shortstop holding on Cromer at second base. Normally you'd have the second baseman Sackett be doing that, but right now the Bison electing to have Brookshaw do it. Scout so. Scouting report might say that Hines is a uh, opposite field hitter. Yep. He hits to all parts of the field. And that one, oh, and that's on the inside corner for a strike. Strike three on Hines. He's not happy with that call at all. No, he is not. Taking a slow walk back to the dugout. Turning over the lineup, Jake King stepping in. As the lefty digs in, talked about his last at bat and how he, I mean, directly over second base is where he lined it to. But like you said, Brookshaw was shaded that way as he is now. He is actually right behind Cromer, between Cromer and the second base bag. That one on the outside corner for a strike. Real quick, while we have time in the inning, we kind of hinted at it in the last inning, but we talk about North Dakota State and how they have yet to even practice on their baseball field up in Fargo. Yeah, and it, they're almost a month and a half into the season now. I can't imagine be, having to deal with something like that. Yeah, their first game was February 18th, and their first home game will be April 8th. I, that is <laughs> – that's a, they were down in Abilene. They were down in Utah against Dixie State, then Long Beach State, Minnesota. That was a neutral site game. Maine, Florida Atlantic, Fairfield, Florida Gulf Coast, and now up here at UNC. A lot of those were neutral site games. They went to a few tournaments as this one sent out into left center and picking that one up for the out is going to be Terrell Huggins. So a leadoff double and then a strikeout and a flyout. Bring in Shaden Kubo. He had a pretty good at-bat last time up. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing another one of what he did last time. Why not take the home run lead away from Glenn? Yeah, there you go. He already tied it up in his last at-bat. Kubo, of course, the solo shot on the 2-0 pitch his last time up. As a man in scoring position with some great speed out there on second. Anything through the infield will probably score Cromer. We do see Brookshaw out there playing a deep shortstop out there into the grass. He's now, as you guys can can't, like, can't, can't see quite it on your see screen. Brookshaw, yeah. Yeah, sack it now, the second baseman holding on Cromer. So it opens up that gap on the right side of the infield. Good looking pitch there, taken for a strike. One and one. Yeah, going back to what we were saying about North Dakota State, though, I mean, it's tough. We were talking about UNC not having a home game until about it was uh, March 12th, and we thought that was crazy. And then we see the lineup and the schedule for North Dakota State, and we're like, wow, that's that's a little more tough. They have the – they call it the Dakota Dome, not spelled how you would think it's spelled. And that is where it's pretty much every sport can practice during the winter. Football, softball, track, baseball, everybody practices in there. And, you know, being a D1 program in North Dakota, you have to have something like that. Yep. It inflates over five days that it takes to inflate. As that is a strike there, two and two. They have a team of a handful of people up there that are able to get that up and running, and they pump in that pure air and just a few cables to keep it up, and they have it up all winter long. Yep. But yeah, not even able to practice on their field yet as that one's – fouled off looks like it bounced off the catcher as well and obviously you, know, you didn't play college baseball you, you were a d1 athlete though you played Almost. football so how would that affect you not being able to even practice on your own field until over halfway through the season i 
uh, football is a little different a than little, baseball. Just a little bit. So just a little bit. I don't think you could do it with football. Yeah. Baseball, you can still – you can get in a cage. You can hit. It's a lot different. Like, you can get a little bit of fielding practice in that Dakota Dome. But it's still not a real – it's not that real baseball feeling. Yeah. It's, and, and they're also practicing on turf. Yeah. That's, that's a big one especially because I don't think there's a lot of Summit League squads out there that have a turf field. No, in turf, you're always going to get a perfect bounce. You mm-hmm. know what you're going to see. Yep. Baseball, like you can look at it the field right now, and you can see a few patches. As Kubo swings through that one on the full count with two outs, and that will strand Cromer. Had a leadoff double, stranding him at second, and that will do it for the third inning. It is 3-1, to one, North Dakota State on top. UNC's prepared me for leadership roles by pushing me out of my comfort zone. My coaches and my professors wanted to hear about my passions, my goals, what my family meant to me, what my mom in particular means to me. And I think that was the most impactful thing to me. And it made me feel like I was going to a place that would see me more than a student. They want you to be the best you can be. I'm on the leadership council here and I've started every game. If you believe in yourself and you keep pushing yourself, you're gonna shock yourself with the things that you can achieve. That sweet morning dew, everyone look at you, and it was plain to see that you were my destiny. I will go where you lead, I'll be right there in a time of need, and when I lose my way, you'll be right there. Start of the fourth inning here at the Jack. Dylan Day is still out there. 60 pitches through three innings. And, of course, you'd like to see that number a little bit lower. Again, if he has a quick inning here, it could uh, could you know give him a good bounce back here. But three runs on him in that last half. See if he can recover here. So he's given up six hits, three runs. All of them earned a walk and two strikeouts. Will Bush, Terrell Huggins, and Charlie Hesse will... Get them started here for the Bison. Yeah, seven, eight, nine coming up for the Bison. Not saying that they're easy by any means, but this is your chance to kind of work quickly through an inning. Yeah, if there's a chance to have a quick inning, it's probably right here. First pitch outside, one and zero. Oh. So UNC, that you know, of course, they had that lead in the bottom of the first off the Shaden Kubo home run, two hits for UNC, and that was an, that was something we saw yesterday as a Breaking ball comes in for a strike. UNC had 13 hits yesterday, but were not able to get, push over a lot of runs. Yeah, they just weren't getting the right hits at the right time. Which is like, you look up at the scoreboard and see 13 hits. Like, they did a good job hitting the ball. Yeah, they, they did a out, great They job. out hit North Dakota State yesterday. But yeah, unfor- thir- 13 hits to 11 for North Dakota State. Yep. But North Dakota State, unfortunately, able to get the right hits at the right time. Yeah. Final score of that one, of course, was 9-5. to five. North Dakota State scoring all those. Ooh, crazy breaking ball coming in. Scoring all those in two innings, four in the fourth and five in the eighth. Tied going into the eighth at four all. But then, I mean, we we saw the back end of the bullpen for North Dakota State yesterday, and they they are exactly who they're advertised as. The chopper comes up, short hop for Cromer across the diamond to Glenn, and a nice first out there for UNC. Yeah, great play there by Cromer, too. Looked like he was kind of sitting back on that, wanted to wait and get the better hop, but then he saw with the speed there by Bush, he doesn't look like he would be a speed threat at all, but he was hustling down the line, knew he had to come up, get the short hop, and fire it over to first for the out. And I'd say the, the left side of the infield with the Cromer twins, Cromer 1 and Cromer 2, that's some terrific defense out there. Absolutely. I mean, those guys, they, they make some plays. Smooth with the glove. Yes. And thank goodness one of them wears his socks high, or else I just wouldn't know who they are. Nope. They Strike could, there on the first pitch. They could switch middle of the inning and no, never no, know. No idea. If they switch jerseys even, I, I would have no idea. Nope. Oh one count, one out. Outside corner. Make it 0-2. It's all there. Going back, that was Terrell. Terrell Huggins asking the umpire if that's about as far out as he'll go. That one was a little bit out there. 0-2 delivery. Breaking ball fouled off. Way to fight that one off there from Huggins. Saw a good fastball in the outside corner, and then 
breaking ball in on the hands. O2 delivery. Looked like a cutter. Oh, just too high. And that pitch was exactly where Craig Kenny wanted that. He didn't have to move his glove from where he was lined up. Makes it a 1 2 count. Good arm side action on that pitch. Going low in the zone. It seems like Kenny's just kind of he's eating at the edge of the zone. Nothing is really in the middle, which, of course, is a pitcher. That's, I mean, if you can spot the edges, you're going to have a good day. Yeah, and I think they're trying to get that outside pitch again here against Tuggins. Try that or maybe a, a cutter in on the hands. Hit him with a jam job. And that one just right down the middle and sent into left field. So a one-out single for Huggins, and that will bring up nine-hole hitter Charlie Hesse. One for one. It was a big one, though. It was. It was uh, not a small one. Solo, solo shot for the nine-hole hitter. First home run of the year, and, and he was basically, I, I think he was the last player in the starting lineup to not have a home run on the year. Had so, to get it eventually. Had to get it eventually. I mean, this is one of the top power hitting teams in the conference. They are the top in the conference, but yep. one of the tops in the nation. Oh, one count to Hesse. Throw to first, nothing going there. Oh, one count, one out. This one is a slow roller through the Cromer twins and into left field. Just found a way to get through. Yeah, that was a slow roller too. I was surprised that neither of the Cromers tried to lay out for that one as they are known to do. So another one out hit and now there's two on. And that'll turn the lineup over. Brock Anderson will step in. Not often you see a first baseman as a leadoff hitter. Yeah, I've been thinking that all weekend too. It's it's very unusual. Yeah. Normally your first baseman's gonna be batting somewhere three, four, five. I mean he's hitting three twenty on the season, three home runs, so you know, and on this lineup, three home runs is not <laughs> on the tops of nope. the team. So I mean not a bad spot. If you're hitting for average like that and you have guys who have a little bit more pop, I throw them up there at the top. First pitch is a ball. 1 0. Just one out here in the inning. Infielders are double play depth. Middle infield, I should say. Day checking the runner and delivers. This one swung on and sent high uh -oh. and deep. And King will bring it in on the track. I'll be I'll be the first to say I didn't think that was coming back. No, I, you probably got you guys probably heard me say uh oh. I definitely <laughs> thought that one was going to be out of there. I mean that was a towering fly ball caught right there on the track by King for the second out. Yeah, and unfortunately for Anderson, I think he just got under that one. Yep. Because King had ample time to run and get to the mm -hmm. wall there on that. And yeah. Just millimeter up higher on that ball. And yeah, all that's about the launch that's angle. Over the park, yep. All about that launch angle they keep talking about. Huggins did advance to third on the fly ball. So it's runners at the corners now with two outs. Caden Schwabi stepping in. He's over two today. Chance to get out of it here, though, for a day. Turn return to Bunt. Laying it down, and it is fielded cleanly by day. Not in time as Schwabi is a speedster. And now the bases are loaded, and, and that's that small ball we talked about early yep. on. But, I mean, if you watch these this Bison squad in in batting practice and warm-ups and everything, they are constantly bunting. Somewhere on the field, somebody is doing a bunting drill. Yep, and the only perk from that bunt, though, was is Huggins wasn't able to come around and score because it was right down the third base side. True. And so Day was able to – because if Huggins had scored, Day would have been able to j easily tag him out for the third out of the inning. Carly Wasaki out there having a word with his pitcher. We, again, cannot see the 
Bears bullpen from where we are, so we don't know if there's action. I couldn't, I don't think there would be action right now. Just a 3-1 ball game here in the fourth, especially with two outs, but you never know. Iwasaki out there giving some words of encouragement to his sophomore starter. And Iwasaki, usually, at least in the earlier part of the season, we didn't see him go out there unless it was for a pitching change. Yep. But this weekend, it seems it's kind of getting changed up. He's been going out there and giving some words to his pitcher. Yeah, and uh, Coach Martin, he's always been the one going out for the pitching changes. Yeah, looks like they uh, almost switched places here. Two outs. Bison are all over those bases. Swing and a miss. Nice first pitch there to Brookshaw. Brookshaw is two for two today. Two singles. And as always, with two outs, especially with all these forces now, you're one pitch from getting out of it. And I think that was probably what Iwasaki was saying, is, hey, you're one pitch, just try to not let him get a run across as that breaking yep. ball comes a little far outside. You know, a 3-1 ball game, and especially with these two teams and how they've kind of been swinging the bats in this series. You can definitely overcome that if you're the Bears. Nine hits already for North Dakota State. That one outside. Brookshaw, 338 average. That's after his two for two is going on right now. Inside corner and got him. And, and, you know, with those pitches outside, those breaking balls outside, that opened up that inside corner yep. and spotted the fastball there. And you saw Brookshaw jump out of the way. Wasn't ready for that one after those outside pitches. Not at all. Now we got twos across the scoreboard right now. Number two, Brookshaw hitting. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. There you go. Deuce is wild. Yep. Big breaking ball comes in outside again, and that seems to be where Day is, is coming up a little short right now. Yeah. Is placing that breaking ball because he's really spotting the fastball. And here's an important pitch because all the runners are going to be taken off on any hit. Yep. Full count here, two outs, and look at the shift, major shift by the infield. Kubo is back behind the first base runner. Cameron Cromer behind second base as this one gets away, and this could be more than one run. One run comes in. And it'll be station to station. So a wild pitch doesn't actually do as much damage. It would it would does the same as if it was a walk. Yes. Now batting designated hitter number five, Logan Williams. Logan Williams stepping in and uh, he's got the bases loaded. Yeah, not exactly what you like to see there with Logan Williams. You know, because we were talking about that in the, our little pregame show that yesterday he came up a lot with no one on the bases. Kind of making up for that one here. So hopefully finding a way to get him out would be huge here. 4-1 ball game, high fastball, a little too high. I'm not sure I'd start Logan Williams with a high fastball. You don't want that to come. I mean, that one was up no. there. He wouldn't be able to really get that one. But if that was a little bit lower, that that is dangerous. I don't think I'll, I'm going to come back with one of those. Great pitch there. Good pitch. Little, little on the outside yep. corner, able to spot it. One and one. You're listening to Bobby Morrow and Matt Gator here on the call. Had the calls for you this weekend. It's been a great weekend of baseball. Beautiful weather. Oh, Absolutely. my goodness. It has been gorgeous in Greeley. And, ooh, trying to get that outside, high outside corner. Couldn't get it. Two and one. Yeah, that was – that's a tough one. That was kind of one of those 50-50 calls. That would have been a strike most likely yesterday with the zone that we got from Lawrence. John Fry not, not getting that one, though. So, 2-1 count, two outs. And this one's sent deep uh, into left yep. field, and there it is. 
We'd said it, not the guy you want up with the bases loaded, and he left one high. And Williams did not miss it. No, that one got out of here in a hurry. We talk about the big the big innings. It's not like the uh, the Bison hit get a run, two runs every other inning or something. It is a big inning. They had three runs last time, five this time. As pitching coach uh, Martin is heading out there. And now we might see a pitching change, but we'll have to keep an eye on that bullpen. And we are going to have a pitching change. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll get to the new pitcher after this. I think that UNC has given me the tools to make an impact on my community. My major here at UNC is political science. I am very excited that I've been able to be a part of Student Senate, and I can't imagine my life without that impact and making those changes. I got so much more out of this experience than just a degree. I'll be leaving here a better person, a more engaged person, more educated person, someone who's more caring for others. We're here for the ones with big hearts, the ones with big calluses, the ones who go the distance, the ones holding down the fort, the weekend warriors, the crafty ones, these crafty ones too, and the ones just being themselves. Here's to the ones who define the Colorado spirit. We're proud to be the community bank that helps them live that way. Because we're not just a bank in Colorado. We're Bank of Colorado. There's only one. Coming to UNC, one thing that I really wanted to engage in was different leadership roles for professional and personal development. I'm currently the Director of Finance for our Student Senate. I am also in Beta Alpha Psi in the President's Leadership Program. Having all of these different opportunities across campus, I think is really gonna be helpful when I go into my career and into real world situations, and also has been super empowering. New pitcher is out there for UNC. It is the right-hander Jack Tuttle. As he will take over here and nobody on the base paths and two outs in the inning. Uh, Pretty good situation to come into if you are the uh, a reliever. It is. Anytime you can come in with no one on the bases, you always like that. You just don't really like what led to no one being on the yeah, bases. Yeah, the, the whole 8-1 to one score, probably not ideal. Yeah, the but grand slam. Yeah, the, yeah. The last at bat. Not yeah. not an ideal situation, but you know. Yeah, you win some, you lose some, you yep. know. But uh, at least he only has to get one out. He does. Freshman yep. coming in. Right now, 7.08 on the year and 20 and one-third innings pitched. Allowed 16 earned runs. Strikeout to walk ratio is sitting at exactly one. 15 strikeouts, 15 huh. walks. Consistent. Like to see that change a little bit, get more strikeouts yes. than walks, but yeah, you know. Yeah. Simonson's going to step in to greet him. Simonson one for one with two RBIs and a walk. And he pokes this one out and gets over Glenn's head for what should be extra bases. That's going to be at least three. And they're really screaming. Cromer saying, come on, get it in. <laughs> and that's – you can't place it better than that. I could, have thrown, no. I could not have thrown it like that. No, and that had good spin on it too that it just kept tailing away from King. and Barely yep. hit. It went over Glenn's head at first. Yep. Landed in fair territory, and then, like you said, that crazy spin just took it all the way to the corner away from King. So how about that? Welcome to the ball game, Jack Tuttle. Man on third now, Drew Sackett stepping in, 0 for 2 with a strikeout today. Beginning to be a, a, a long inning here for UNC. Had a few of those this yes, weekend. Yes, we have. Ninth batter to come to the plate right now for this Bison offense. Tough day for Dylan Day. is he, he really did. He had a good start to the game. His first two innings looked really good. Got out of some trouble. Stranded a few runners. And then gave up three in the third. And then obviously here in the fourth, it just really unraveled. Yep. Right now, second one of just two people in this Bison offense without a hit already. Only sitting in the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, 11 hits as a team. 11 hits, 8 runs. Big breaking ball outside for a ball. Looks like a big 12-6 curve. 
So final line on Dylan Day, three and two-thirds innings pitched, allowed ten hits, eight runs, all of those earned, two walks and two strikeouts. This one, early on that one, sent deep down the third baseline, but foul. How are our fans down there in the uh, truck bed? They safe down there? Yeah, that that one was plenty past. Them. Okay, yeah. Didn't have to worry about that one at all. Can we give them some UNC hard hats? They should probably be having something like yeah, that on. Get some branding down there. If not a glove, somewhere in that truck bed. Yeah. Two two delivery, outside. Make it three and two. Ball gets away, but no uh, no movement from the runner. As you saw, Simonson kind of clap and get mad at himself. Like, ah, I should have been paying attention. Looked like he had a late response to that one. Yeah, I think just because it, it didn't get away that far from Kenny at first, and then he popped up and kind of kicked it further away. And Being a catcher is tough like that sometimes. Yep. A lot of, lot of things that you can kick and trip over. and Ooh, that one comes in. He's going to wear that one. I'm not sure. Did he wear that one? or No, that, that, that actually bounced off Kenny. Yeah, I think it. As he yeah. looks like he got him on the top of the foot. He kind of did a little hop there. So it av avoiding Sackett on the pitch somehow, but hitting his catcher. So now it is runners on the corners. Two I'm, outs still. I'm just wondering if that did hit Sackett there, because I don't know why, if it wouldn't have hit Sackett, why Simonson wouldn't have come home to score on that. Very true. Yeah, that would have been a that, that ball was way away from Kenny. Yeah, so I'm wondering if it clipped off of Sackett. Called a dead ball then. Yeah, yeah. and then bounced away from Kenny. And hit the elbow with Sackett, it looks like. Oof. One of those plays, I mean, you don't want to get hit anywhere, but the elbow is one of the worst. Yeah. Tuttle set and delivers this one. Ooh, no call there for a ball. Seven, now eight pitches for Jack Tuttle. One hit was that triple. And a walk. Two out and, and you know, I, I don't want to kick a dead horse here, but it's these two out. In, I mean, getting the third out has really been an issue. And that one way. Oh, that goodness. One nicked him, too. Got Bush. Bush didn't even react. I'm not sure he knew he was hit, but the umpire, no. <laughs> umpire said he was. So he'll take it. So now the bases are juiced, and uh, we're going to see Iwasaki coming back out to talk to his freshman. As with just nine pitches, he's loaded the bases. Never what you want to do right when you come into a game. We had mentioned it's not an awful situation for a reliever to come into. Bases were empty and two outs in the inning. Yep. Now he's got himself a bases loaded situation. Yeah, bases loaded situation. You still have those two outs. I mean, this is a five run inning, though. You, oh gosh, you can't have it get bigger than this. No. You have to find a way to limit him here. You do have Terrell Huggins up there. He's one for two. Did have that have that towering home run yesterday? He did. That he did. Big three run shot. And now, not sure what's going on, but Greg Kenny not looking happy, and now the umpires are going to have a meeting of the minds up there. What do you think they're talking about? Dinner reservations? or I'm not sure, and I'm trying to watch Coach Carly Wasaki because it looked like the umpires were messing with, messing with their scorecards, but it doesn't look like we're going to get any changes here. All right. Maybe they were just all making sure they had the same things in their books. Yeah. So with all that said and done, we're set to resume. No pitch yet to Huggins. Two outs, bases loaded for Jack Tuttle. Freshman right-handed pitcher in some hot water. Comes in high with the fastball for first pitch. Make it 1-0. So 11 hits, 8 runs for North Dakota State. On the other side, UNC, 2 hits, 1 run. Solo shot from Kubo. Good stop there by Kenny. Yeah, needed to have that one. Yeah, saved a run from scoring. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you mentioned, this is the Final home game here in this series. They head to Manhattan, Kansas. Take on Kansas State. UNC does for a 
midweek series. This one sent to Cromer. He keeps it in front of him. He will take the easy out on the force at third. And mercifully, the inning is over. A five-run inning for the Bison. It is eight to one as we go to the bottom of the fourth after this. Top of the fourth inning for the Bison. Discover a community of learners where immersive programs tailored to fit your goals and interests meet you where you are. Flexible, affordable, online, and face-to-face. -face. Explore more at the University of Northern Colorado Extended Campus. Getting ready for the bottom of the fourth inning, and it'll be Josh Glenn leading it off, followed by Cade Moeller and Lincoln Turner. And you just said it before we came back on. Need a big inning. Yeah, absolutely. And Bears just right now got to find a way to bring some runs across the board. Yeah, right now it's all about, you know, next man up. Next man up. It's not You're not a yep. bloop and a blast away. This no. is going to take some work. And it, we're early in the game. And we've seen the Bears come back from these big deficits before. We saw it in... The uh, the series they had with Western Illinois came back and won a game 14 to 13 in that series, a, a big comeback win. And we've seen it happen, but it's going to take some work against a, get a good pitching staff. Yeah, absolutely. And pl the other thing you have to look at is the other lineup. They're probably not going to be done scoring for the day. Yeah, I mean that's that's a darn good point there. I mean. You'd this love if they were, and you knew that you oh just yeah. had to get to eight runs. Yep, as Glenn pokes this one. How did he even make contact with that? It's a single. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, off the end of the bat, just pokes it right through the gap between second baseman and the first baseman. Yep. Hey, leadoff single. Not at all what he was trying to do with it, but nope. that's a hit's a hit. It's a hit. That looks in a lot on your scorecard there. It just says single. Doesn't say yep. how it happened. So that brings up Cade Moeller. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And how about this? I mean, you look up there, and a lot of these hitters for North Dakota State, they're already on their – they'll be coming up for their fourth at-bat. UNC, this is the second at-bat for Moeller. Yep. That one outside for ball one, 1-0. One oh. Shaky rough inning – or first inning, I should say, for Evan Sankey. But he really has settled down. He's only given up two hits – since the solo shot to Kubo, five strikeouts as that one comes in high for a strike, one and one. This is the first Summit League series for North Dakota State, so they would love a sweep to start conference play. And UNC just would love to salvage a game here from this series as this one's popped up high into shallow right field and Fielded cleanly out there by Jack Simonson for out number one. A lot of weak contact, except for the solo shot from, from Kubo. Yep. A lot of weak contact for uh, Evan Sankey here. He's not pitching directly, and he's not trying to find barrels, we should say. Yes. Because some pitchers pitch to contact and just uh, wait, let their defense – do the talking. Yeah, and Sankey's been doing a good job finding strikeouts, too. Got five strikeouts through three and a third inning right now. Yeah, and Lincoln Turner watches the first one come in for a strike. It's like a breaking ball coming in. Yeah, he does a good job of missing bats, and when he does make, when they do make contact, not a lot of strong contact. Swung on and popped straight up. Looking for it, calling for it, backing up and falling down with the somersault. And now they might get two here as Glenn is caught stealing. So a double play by Will Bush on the foul out and catches Glenn trying to sneak a steal at second base. And that will end the inning here for UNC. Remains an 8-1 ball game. When you're ready to take the next step, 
develop skills for a new career, or become licensed in your field, join a community committed to your success. Choose from more than 100 graduate programs. Work side by side with mentoring faculty who share their research and experience so that you're ready to step up. On campus, off campus, and online. The Graduate School at the University of Northern Colorado. It's only 8 a.m. and it's going to be another hot one. Today's high is 85 degrees with lows ranging in the upper 50s. Tomorrow's more of the same, plus some light wind coming in from the northeast. Coming up at 8.30, all kind of exclusive. Babe, it's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. Bit of a disappointing end to the bottom of the fourth inning. So we head to the fifth. Tuttle is still out there for UNC. Got himself into a little hot water last time out. He entered the game. Nobody on in two outs and in nine pitches. He loaded the bases. Was able to get out of it, though. Only, actually, I don't even think he got a run that came across. No, no he, no. he was able to get out of that. So stranded those three runners. Was not easy, but was able to do it. He only gave up one hit in all of that. Yeah, a lot of high stress pitches for him, for sure. I say, you know, he loaded the bases in nine pitches, but he only threw twelve. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> no runs come across yep. twelve pitches. If you didn't know that he loaded the bases, it's honestly not bad. No, it's not the worst start. Just put it behind you. Yeah. No damage done. Just look at the stat line. There you I go. That's not yeah. what happened. Yeah. Hesse steps in, and he's met by a nice breaking ball for strike one. I'm not sure I'd throw that one there again, though. No, I think Hesse will be all over that. Well, Hesse's been all over everything. He's two for two with an RBI today. Does go breaking ball again. That one's in the dirt, though. Hesse, their nine-hole hitter. The senior out there. One of three seniors in the starting lineup for... North Dakota State as a 1-1 pitch comes in, and he almost clipped Hesse again for another hit batsman. Two sophomores in the starting lineup, the only two underclassmen are Schwabe and, I should say, Caden Schwabe and Will Bush. And speaking of Will Bush, let's go back to that play that ended the last inning, and I, I know I yeah, see your face. You probably don't want to talk about it, but you have to give credit to to Bush, what an incredible play by him! Yeah, I mean that was phenomenal. Absolutely, and like I understand what Glenn was doing there, taking off, trying to tag from first on the foul out because Bush, as he made the play, made the catch, fell over. Yeah, I and mean, I think Glenn saw that that was going to happen, so he took off, and Bush just hopped right up and made a great throw over to second. Yeah, I, I mean, got him uh, on the one hopper. The the what Glenn was thinking, I think we all thought. I mean, he there was a backward somersault going on as yep. the ball four comes in of the payoff pitch and. Put the runner on. But, yeah, I mean, you saw the su backward somersault catcher on the ground. He's not going to have his bearings when he stands up. Well, proved us all wrong. Yes, he did. He stood up and was able to fire to second for the double play. Well, it looks like we're going to have a pitching change here. We'll get confirmation, and there they are. So a pitching change coming for UNC. We're going to go ahead and take a break. New pitcher coming up after this. As a first generation student, I didn't even know if I was going to come to college in the first place. When I talked to my parents about it, I was like, I'm going to go to college. Diversity and inclusion here on campus is very strong. The cultural centers were very welcoming, and they were the ones to really push me and be like, go get involved. UNC gave me the confidence, the self-advocacy, the motivation to do bigger things and reach and have bigger dreams. Playground. New pitcher out there for UNC, Riley Bost. We saw him start a game last weekend, coming in for relief today. 
Yeah, he's started five games, appeared in six. ARA right now sitting at 8.1. 8.1, 20 even innings pitched, giving up 26 hits, and he has 20 strikeouts on the season. Had a good start to his start last week. Came in and or started the game, I should say, and had a really good start, you know, a few scoreless innings. He had a lot of confidence, and then it just kind of unraveled in one inning, and, and he was pulled from there, and then it – Game kind of unraveled. They ended up winning on a walk-off. I did. But uh, definitely he had a tough inning there. But he's a guy, if he can get if he can get rolling, he's got some confidence and swagger out there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we were kind of starting to see in his start last weekend. Definitely has emotion on the mound. We know that. My <laughs> one thing I do remember from his last start, he had a comebacker right, right by him. And he just froze because it, it came yep. by, and then he looked at the dugout and froze and checked his pulse on his neck. Yeah. Sort of patting his chest, checking his heartbeat. Yeah, someone that definitely likes to have fun out there. Yeah. Baseball's a fun game. Usually more fun when you're winning, but, you know, it's that it happens. So he does inherit a runner. No outs, man on first as the lineup turns over Brock Anderson, stepping in for the fourth time. He's 0 for 3. The Bison first baseman. First pitch from Bost is low and away. We thank you for joining us today on this broadcast. We enjoyed doing this for you. A lot of, a lot of other things going on, but we thank you for joining into us. As this one comes in low in the zone, one and one. Brock Anderson right now, only person for this Bison offense that hasn't reached base. I said that in the last half inning about Sackett with the hits. Still doesn't have a hit, but he was able to reach base on a hit by pitch. Now, Boss, we do remember Boss has a great pickoff move. Yes. A very fast, quick uh, pickoff move, and he showed it off there. Wasn't successful, but keep an eye on that. 1-1 one, one count. Swung on and fouled off there by Anderson. And Anderson's just looking to put a ball in play here. Something to give him a chance to get on base. I mean, he's, he's a clean over three, so no strikeouts, no walks, nothing like that. One and two count. See what Boss comes with. Fastball on the outside corner for a ball. Kenny having to slide out there and Snag that one. Two two count, no outs. Man on first. Infield at double play depth. And this is a infield that's turned eight or fourteen double plays, I should say. Good for a second in the summit league. So Cromer one and Kubo out there are good at that. Of course, you know, any of the infielders are good at the Double plays, because double play doesn't just mean the middle infield. Stays a 2-2 count. No outs. Man on first. Anderson up. And he is going to take that. Ooh, looks like right under the knee. That doesn't feel good. Yeah, I think that one caught him on the toe. Did it? I want, that's what it, it looked like I saw. It's so tough to tell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Any, he, anywhere it, between the toe and just below the knee. Yeah, we know that. We know it that. hit him it in the leg. The, uh, well, you know what we can say? We'll go to hockey here. It's a lower body injury. Yes. So a lower body injury. <laughs> we'll, send, uh, we'll send Anderson to first. He's all right down there, though, talking to his first base coach. And they've now had everyone reach base. There you go. Nine for nine. Maybe not how he would have wanted to reach base Probably there. Probably not. But no, he paid a little bit for that one. So, Caden Schwabe stepping in. One for three today, the center fielder. Two men on, no outs. Making some noise out there on the pass. And, oh, trying to throw before he picked up the ball. 
was Kenny, and there you go, a double steal. Yeah, and he's going to be frustrated with himself there because at, at, at first it wasn't a double steal. It was just going to be – It was just Hesse. Yeah, it was just Hesse taking off for third, and then when he dropped the ball, Anderson was able to take off for second and steal that one cleanly too. And Hesse was making some noise back there. He was, you know, scooting he around was. and yeah, I just – being, you know, when you're on the base paths, we trying to get real distracted, trying to get a pitcher's head exactly. Yep. And he did a good job and took off, but heads up from Anderson there because that ball didn't bounce away from Kenny by any means. He no. just dropped it on the transfer. Yep. So Schwabi now has a base open in front of him as he has a 2-0 count. No out, still in the inning. Boss has thrown eight pitches. Of course, a man on third is not Boss' base runner. Yeah, Jack Tuttle will be responsible for him. And you see up there, you're starting to see a little bit of that emotion we were talking about from, from Riley Boss, and he, he shows his emotions. I talk about Kubo wearing his emotions on his sleeve. Boss seems to be the same way. And, you know, when he's feeling it in a good way, you can really tell. Yep. But we're, we'll see what happens if he's not feeling it in a good way. As this one comes in inside corner, and that was kind of close, but called a strike. Yeah, and Schwabi not happy with that one. He thought that one was a good bit inside. So three and one, Boss will try to work back into the count. They have to keep an eye on who's coming up for the Bison. You have Brookshaw and then Logan Williams, who has a grand slam in this one. This one's popped up into left field. Turner comes in, and he will – throw home nice nice arm there is a fake tag from Hesse probably a good job he didn't go good idea that he didn't go I should say yeah I saw him start to tag up and I I was questioning that I was like yeah. I don't know if that's what you want to do and maybe not the best idea yeah and I think it just was a fake tag the whole way yeah. see if he can get an errant throw from Turner and yeah. score off of something there yeah it's not I mean this is college baseball and we talk about how one big inning for either team to, can do anything but it is a a seven run game it's eight to one yep. in the fifth inning and usually especially the old school baseball types they're not gonna take those runs when you're up that high yeah although we did see them steal the bags so we don't know <laughs> yeah and i think they're i don't think they're out of aggressive mode yet i think that was just smart baseball they're not yeah. trying to tag on that yeah no, I don't think there is no I don't think there is such thing as getting out of aggressive mode for the yeah. Bison if we're being honest. I mean, they they were up big on Friday and then came back with a 10-run inning. Yes. I mean, you can't try to not hit the ball. Yeah, they were up, I think it was 10 to 2 at the time and then that very quickly turned into 20 to 2. Yeah, it did and then it ended up being 20 to 3 final after 7. Yep. If you're not aware in the Summit League there actually is a 10-run rule after the seventh inning. We found that out the hard way on Friday. As it's a 2-0 count here, one out. Boss up high, 3-0. and And Boss having some trouble with the strike zone here. Yeah, can't quite fan find that command that he normally has. So he's already walked a batter and hit a batter. Came into this with an even one strikeout per inning. He had 20 innings and 20 strikeouts. As that one will be wide, and that will load up the bases for Peter Brookshaw, who's two for two today. Pardon me, that was Brookshaw who just got on. And that brings up Logan Williams, who is two for three today with a grand slam, and he has the bases loaded. Can we walk him? <laughs> Barry Bonds walk? Barry, bon in Barry Bonds intentional walk? Give up the one run instead of four? Not a bad idea to keep it low in the zone no. here. You just can't. I, I would try to avoid any north to south breaking balls low in the yes. zone. Because that's what... That's what Logan Williams feasted on his last time up. But if you can keep it low in the zone and try to get him to drive one into the dirt and maybe get a double play to get out of the inning, not a bad idea. Definitely don't want to send it high, though. Good 
die there from Williams. Make it 2-0. and And I know Boston isn't trying to do this, but maybe pitching around Williams isn't an awful idea, but at the same it's time, not. you're not gaining too much. So you have Simonson yeah. coming up next who has just as much power. That one's in there, and it is chopped foul. So I, two and one. I think right now for both, he's just trying to stay low in the zone. Yeah. Yeah, definitely – yeah, eating at the corners. Don't yep. want, definitely don't want to throw a cookie in there. No. Bases loaded. One out. Two one count here in the top of the fifth inning, and this one is sent high and deep. Yep, and again and gone. When's Two grand slams in one day. When's the last time you saw a player do that? I could not tell you. Never. I've Hope, never hopefully, I, I never have to tell you again. I don't think I've ever seen it. Well, he's the best power hitter in the conference for a reason, and now he might be regarded as one of the best power hitters in the country after this weekend. That is his fourth home run, I believe, this weekend. Eight RBI day. Eight RBI day. And so it's far. The fifth so inning. So far. Now batting right fielder number 29. I, yeah, I don't have words for that one. I, that's tough. I mean – that's it's just tough. Uh, some days, you know, you win some, you lose some, and then some days are like this. Hey, you could not have said that any better. <laughs> some days are just like this. Ooh, that one coming in with some speed inside. I don't think that's intentional at all, but don't want to see anybody get hit, especially after a grand slam. Simonson is two for two with two RBIs and a walk. 342 average on the year. So I believe, I could be wrong here, but with my quick fact checking, I believe the last time that two grand slams hit by the same batter in college baseball was Caleb Pendleton, who did it last year actually, in his first two collegiate at bats. Ha! Huh. <laughs> welcome. For FAU. Oh my goodness. Yeah, welcome to the welcome to college baseball. Yeah, gosh. Well, Logan Williams did it. He has a little bit of experience with the long ball, though. Yeah, not quite his first two college at bats. Not, not quite. Ten home runs. That was his tenth right there. We just saw. Get this. He has ten home runs and twelve walks. Almost as many home runs as walks. Yeah, we kind of joked about should we have walked him there, and I think I we probably should have. Yeah, I, I think, think we should have. Now it would have been a bad idea. Is now Simonson gets on with the walk. You know, if anything, it's still a gorgeous day. It is it's still early in the day, early afternoon. It's uh, one forty-one here local time, and how about this? Boss is just holding the ball out for his coach. Didn't even want to argue. Nope. Pitching change coming your way after this. Imagine yourself on a college campus. Make it a Division I university. Add the very best professors and some of the top ranked residence halls in Colorado. Now think about your dream career, that thing you've wanted to do your whole life. Imagine learning it and doing it right here. You've just imagined yourself at the University of Northern Colorado. Apply today at unco.edu. That sweet morning dew, oh, one look at you, and it was plain to see that you were my destiny. I will go where you lead, I'll be right there in a time of need, and when I lose my way, you'll be right there.
Back here, 12-1 ball game in the fifth inning, and Jacob Salem is out there. We saw him pitch yesterday, a breaking ball pitcher. We did. He took care of the top half of the ninth inning. Had a good appearance. Came in one inning, no earned runs, no walks. It was a pretty good outing. Yeah, he did good. Able to Yeah, face three keep batters, three up, three down. Yeah, kept it where it was. That's all you're asking here. And yep. In the fifth inning, we're obviously, we only saw him very briefly uh, last time out. And he hasn't had a lot of, of, of appearances on the season. Not sure what his uh, leash is as far as a pitch count or w how far he can go stamina-wise or anything like that. So we're going to find out today. Yes, we will. As he's coming in in the fifth inning, we'll see how far he can work. 2.2 .2 innings pitched on the year. Two hits, two strikeouts for him. Zero, zero, zero ERA. Second base, number 13, Drew Sackett. Drew Sackett stepping in. <clears throat> Comes in for a strike. Jacob Salem, a grad transfer here to UNC, and he is actually out of a Summit League foe coming from Oral Roberts. Hey, you mentioned it yesterday. I thought he was going to be getting away from the Summit League and right back into it. Yeah, <laughs> We mentioned this is the first league or first year for UNC in the Summit League. They spent eight years in the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference. They had a lot of realignment, so UNC saw their chance to cut down on some travel and join the Summit League. Not a bad idea. Some of those WAC road trips get pretty long. Yes, they definitely can. 0-2 count is the pitch in the dirt, one and two. Yeah, traveling up to Seattle. Got to go out to California for Cal Baptist and yep. New California schools. Utah, and then they just added the Texas Four. So then now you'd be going all the way down to Texas as well. Yeah, and hopefully being in the Summit League, it proves to be a little bit better here for UNC. This one is lofted into right field, and it is, might hit no man's land, and it will. Kubo gave it a good run, dropped in between Kubo and King, and we have seen that a lot this weekend. Just dropping them in right where nobody can get it. Yep. So a single there. We'll put two on. Will Bush will step in. He's one for two. Saw him make a pretty great defensive play in the bottom of the fourth inning to end the inning, a double play. Caught the foul ball, did a backward summered salt, and doubled off Josh Glenn, who was trying to steal second. As this one is sent out into right field, King is tracking and under it, and runners will stay where they are. So one, two outs, two outs I should say. That brings in Terrell Huggins. One for a three today, hitting 250 on the year. The left fielder had a home run yesterday, a big three-run shot. See how Jacob Salem comes after Huggins. And that's how he's going to come after him, right at the elbow. So Huggins is going to reach on a hit-by-pitch, and bases are loaded for Charlie Hesse, 2-4-2 two two today. And you look at Jacob Salem when he's out there on the mound, very quick twitch head movements, whether there's runners on or not. If there's runners on, it's very quick head movements to check the runners. And if nobody's on, he goes up and down rather quickly with the head, kind of the head movement. So... He has kind of a, we said it yesterday, kind of a, there's something about his wind-up, just kind of something about it. He pulls his glove way back, arches his back, and then throws it in and kind of has a little twist on his arm, on his wrist when he, when he delivers. Yeah, a little bit of an unorthodox lineup, or wind-up. Yeah, I would say, yeah. See him pumping the chest out there, arching that back. High, he does hide the ball, though, as we see. Keeps it back. Checking the runners, and and I think that is something that will 
what that benefits him, I should say. Yes. Is he really – he hides that ball. It's right behind him, almost chicken wings, until he releases – Bison have effectively batted around here again as Charlie Hesse led things off this inning with a walk. Good job by Hesse to bring that bat down. That almost was a foul ball. Could have used it. Could have used it, yeah. Send it a 3-0 count right now. Yeah, 3-0, two outs, bases loaded. Salem has thrown nine pitches. He's given up one hit in his .1 inning pitched. Have to assume that this is just straight take no matter what here. Yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd have to. Just rest the bat on the shoulder and leave it there. There you go. That walks in a run. Four-pitch walk to Charlie Hesse, and he'll make his way to first, and they'll go station to station. Around the bases, and now the lineup turns over. Brock Anderson will step in. He is 0 for 3 today. Now he always finds a way to get on base, though. We saw it yesterday. He didn't mention this earlier. He is now the only Bison without a hit. He did reach base in his last at bat with the hit by pitch, but. He got hit by two. He got hit twice yesterday. Yes. Almost just got hit there. Guy's like a magnet. Maybe that's why he's a leadoff hitter. Just, yeah. He just eats finds, it. Yep, finds a way to yeah. get hit while they're. <laughs> There's a hit happening, whether it's yes. the ball and the bat or the ball and him. Yep. So 1 0 count, two outs, bases loaded, and that one comes in for a strike one and one. <laughs> Need, needed a strike there. Yes, we did. It's Craig Kenny standing there taking a look down the first base line. Not sure what he's looking at down there. Yeah, I was trying to look, see. See what was going on. Couldn't quite say anything down hey, there. He might have been but, getting you know. signs from the first baseman down there, Josh Glenn. He is the yeah. regular catcher. Not out of the realm of possibilities. Possibilities, no. yeah. Fouled off there, and Salem is ahead in the count, one and two. Could really use a strike out here. Not just to get out of the inning, but for a little bit of just a little moral lift. Yes. And that one will be high, two and two. It's, so far, it's been back-to-back -back five run innings. Both of those following a three run inning in the third. Yeah, what seemed like was potentially going to be a close game here. It's kind of turned into quite the opposite so far. That one outside to bring it to a full count. Full count, two outs, bases loaded. 13 to 1 ball game. Salem gets his sign. Sets and delivers. And this one grounded foul. Watch out down there. Trying to make that yep, barehanded grab. Coach, tried to make a play on it. Oof, Couldn't get it. That one would have left a big old bruise on the palm. Yeah, coming a little too hot for him. I tell you, I, I always say they're just trying to relive the glory days out there. We should just give them a glove. Why don't we do that? Like, that'd be fun. Could, yeah. Let him, like, let him do it. And this one lined down and foul. Had a chance to make another play in. Yep. He, I, he, he, he didn't want that one though. That one was a little too much. Yep. So it remains a full count. Salem nearly doubling his pitch count with just this at-bat. He started the at-bat with 10 pitches. And there it is, another walk. So again, station to station. Drew Sackett came in to score there. Anderson made his way to first. Brings in Caden Schwabe. Center fielder number 19, Caden See, seventh walk of the day for the this Bears pitching staff. Yeah, it's been a difficult day just finding the strike zone. Yeah, should note they also have four hit batters, so that's 11 free bait, 11 people that they've put on base for free. So 11 there, and then they've also given up 13 hits. Yes. Whew. I'm no mathematician. 
But it's I don't, 20, it's I don't, 24 base runners. I don't think that equation. Least. I don't think that equation is a uh, winning one. No, it is not. Hey, O2 here though. O2 count. Two outs here. Base is loaded. See what Salem can do. And this one is sent into right field. Can King get there? He can as he ends the inning on the line out to right field. And again, the inning is over. Six runs come across. 14 to 1 is the score. We'll have more after this. When you're ready to take the next step, develop skills for a new career, or become licensed in your field, join a community committed to your success. Choose from more than 100 graduate programs. Work side by side with mentoring faculty who share their research and experience so that you're ready to step up. On campus, off campus, and online. The Graduate School at the University of Northern Colorado. We're here for the ones with big hearts, the ones with big calluses, the ones who go the distance, the ones holding down the fort, the weekend warriors, the crafty ones, these crafty ones too, and the ones just being themselves. Here's to the ones who define the Colorado spirit. We're proud to be the community bank that helps them live that way. Because we're not just a bank in Colorado. We're Bank of Colorado. There's only one. Well, there you see how this game has been going. UNC had a solo shot in the bottom of the first off the bat of Shaden Kubo. And since then, it has been all Bison. Three runs in the third, five in the fourth, six just now in the fifth. 14 to one ball game. And in addition to the 13 hits, there have been 11 free passes by UNC pitching. That includes walks and hit by pitch. Chase Cromer leading it off for the Bears, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. So right now, if you're on this Bears team, how how are you finding a way to keep yourself in it? Well, what you can tell yourself, and this is what I would be telling myself, is that was appealed to first and calling it ball, is that you're still in the middle innings. Yep. You're in the middle innings, and what I, you know, what you always say is, if they can do it, we can do it. Yeah. As Cromer rolls over on this one, chopped to third, took a crazy bounce. Cromer was going to have a chance, and he's safe. And we've seen a few of those plays from Cromer this weekend. Yep. He just he he will bust it out of the box. One the very first at bat he had on Friday, or Saturday I should say, he did not bust it out of the box yeah. because it was kind of an awkward play that he didn't know where the ball went. He was thrown out at first. Yes. Ever since then, it's been a dead sprint. Anyway, back to what I was saying. As now Craig Kenny steps in, yeah, you have to realize you're still in the middle innings here. Now, granted, we do have to keep in mind the ten run rule after seven for the Summit League. So you have to get some work done here early as this one's popped up to first base. And under making the grab is Anderson. So, you know, get a few runs, avoid the 10 run rule, and then just, you have to get, gosh, I mean, at this point, you have to get at least three in an inning. Yeah. I mean, cause you're not, you're, it's gonna be tough to have a huge inning. Yep. A huge, huge inning like we've seen from North Dakota State. But if you can get three in an inning, uh, by the time you get to the ninth year, you're gonna you're gonna be in there with at least a chance. Yeah, a chance, and if anything, you find something to have pride in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got uh, Cameron Cromer stepping in now. He's one for one today. He had that leadoff double, and then was stranded out there. Yep. All right now, I know you mentioned this in the bottom half of the last inning. The Bison have two people that have already batted five times, and this is just Cromer's second at bat. Yeah, everybody who's been up in this inning, including Hayden Hines, who's on deck, have only had one at-bat. Yes. Four hits for UNC. Swung on and missed. Two and one. Cromer has one of those four hits, as we just mentioned. So you have to think about a guy like, uh, you have to think about Jake King. I mean, you haven't had a second look at this pitcher. As this one is sent deep to left field, not deep enough for Chase Cromer to tag. 
But here's the issue you have is if you're king, you're like, hey, I might get a chance to see this pitcher for the second time. But then you look in the bullpen and you got, uh, yeah, somebody throwing. Yeah. So you might not. You might. And that, I mean, if you're, if you're Tyler Oaks, head coach of North Dakota State, how beautiful is that? I mean, you're avoiding getting these hitters to see your starter more than once. As Hines, a little early on that one, fouls it down the third base line. Yeah, super nice being able to do that. I mean, he doesn't need to worry about it right now anyway. No. He has a terrific bullpen. So the back end of his bullpen, except for Tyler Rorich, we probably won't see him no matter what today. He threw a lot yesterday. Yes. Threw, uh, I think, four innings yesterday. But we most likely won't see him, but still a terrific bullpen back there. So he's <laughs> – Tyler Oaks does not have an issue right now. No, not at all. And, yeah, as you were saying, yeah, Ro Rick went 60 total pitches, three and two-thirds innings. Out in front of that one, Hayden Hines, and that is the strikeout to end the bottom of the fifth. We'll have the sixth inning coming your way after this. It's within us to want to explore, discover, connect, succeed. And if we start in a place that welcomes, encourages, inspires, we'll find community and new ways to make the world better. Explore more at the University of Northern Colorado. Pitcher out there for the Bears. Who we got out there, Matt? We got Sam Colehauer out there. Didn't see him yesterday. We did see him come into the game on Friday. He's been having a pretty decent year so far, but rough outing on Friday. We saw him. He was unfortunately a part of that 10 run inning that this Bison offense was able to have. His final stat line was he went an inning and a third, allowed just four hits, but three walks, seven runs, all of those earned. Able to come away with one strikeout, face seven batters, 42 pitches. Yeah, and I remember, you know, I, you weren't in that booth. You weren't in the booth. You were nope. here. Yes, yeah, so I was you doing, were the, here. doing the PA you that day. You saw the game, but I you did. weren't in the booth. But I remember talking about how he just didn't have the snap on his stuff. Yeah. His, his, everything seemed a little more flat, and the Bison were able to just feast. It was – they saw it out of his hand, and it must have looked like a beach ball coming at him. Uh, they were able to just rock it. Yeah, absolutely. ERA is up to 9.28 now on the season after that last appearance. Yeah, it only takes one game, yep. a couple innings, uh, a couple or even a third of a bad inning. Yeah, and that's to have that happen. That's exactly what it is, because right now he's sitting at ten and two thirds innings pitched. He's earned runs allowed just seven. So before that, he'd only allowed four. So his ERA was much lower. I think it was around the three, four mark. Yeah, something and now like it's that. Jumped up to nine two eight. So hopefully, can get a, another good outing here. Maybe go a couple innings for the Bears. Well, I'll tell you what. They need a quick inning no matter who's yeah, on the mound. Yeah, they do. doesn't matter who's on the mound. It, it could be me out there, and it needs to be a quick inning. It wouldn't be if I was out there, but nope. it would need to be. <laughs> Thanks. That was a boat of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> like I jumped in there right away? Nope. Oh, gosh. Hey, it wouldn't be a quick inning if I was out there either. <laughs> All, right. All right. It makes you feel a little better. Brookshaw steps in. He's two for two with an RBI and two walks. First pitch to him is a strike from Cole Hauer. That one lifted pretty deep down the right field line, but foul. And Cole Howard, he has a pretty lively fastball. It's just, will he be able? The question is, is his or other his other pitches is, uh, are they able to be like I said, have that snap yep. on, on the break? Yeah. You know, something else I want to note right now, defensively for the Bears, Lucas Allen in at catcher, in place of Craig Kenny. Good catch. Tough to see with the gear over the numbers. Didn't didn't hear it announced, so nope. good catch there. So a defensive substitution. O two count. 
fouled down the first base line. Went right towards the Bears du or, uh, bullpen. You mentioned Lucas Allen in there hitting. He's had five at-bats on the year. One hit, two RBIs. The hit was a double. Not a ton of experience for him, for, Not a lot. for him though, Not so a far. Lot. But a chance for, as this one sent perfectly down the line on the left side. And that was an easy stand-up double to start this inning for Brookshaw. But going back real quick to Lucas Allen, I mean, low sample size. We don't know who we're getting. This could be, you know, a guy who, you know, equating it to like a six-round draft pick in the NFL. Not yep. a lot expected because we don't know. And then he comes out and lights it up. We don't know. Yeah, you who, never know. Who knows what we're going to see. And behind the plate right now, we can tell you that he's got one pass ball in the air and 0 for 3 on stolen bases or catching base stealers, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would be base stealers. There's, there the, there's the word hey. I was looking for. Logan Williams is going to step in. He was behind the plate yesterday for the Bison. He's had an okay game. Yeah, I can't complain. Two home runs, two grand slams, eight RBIs. Ouch. Not a bad day no. by any means. He'll have a happy flight. Also has a single that he came around and scored on. Oh, last little note, yeah. He also has a 2-0 count. You know, not something I'd want to have a 2-0 count on. I would give him a 4-0 count. Let's just put him on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need these other two pitches. Put him on, set up the triple play. I like the way you think. Big breaking ball. And see, that that was scary. Yeah. That was scary. I mean, that if it was down another inch or two, probably would have been the third home run for Williams today. That one hung. And that's that snap. I'm telling you, I don't know. That's the best word I can use right now. I don't yeah. know. I can't think. It's just I got to have that snap, make it move. Yeah, if I was uh, living in these apartments out in left field and I saw Williams coming up to bat, I'd be boarding up my windows right now. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. Have your own bat up there ready to send it back yeah. the other way. 3-1 count. You think he has a green light? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Hey, how about that swung right through it? 3-2. So let's see. Is Logan Williams human? Does have a strikeout back in the first inning. Ah, okay. I already got him. So it is possible to get him out. Possible, but likely? We will see. 3-2 delivery. Swung yes. on and missed. There you go. Lucas Allen giving his pitcher a little props there, pointing with his glove, saying, hey, that's the guy. I mean, that's the guy to get out, and he did. Yep. Third strikeout of the day for this Bears pitching staff. So that brings up Jack Simonson. Simonson has a man on second out there with Peter Brookshaw, led off the inning with a double. Simonson's two for two, two RBIs and two walks. So two, 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 two. So one out here. Twelfth pitch of the outing for Cole Hauer is outside. One zero -oh count. Cole Hauer getting his sign from Lucas Allen. Checks the runner and delivers, and ooh, that one high and inside. Simonson getting out of the way there. A few of these hitters have worn pitches, but uh, I don't think Simonson wanted that one. No, I didn't really want to wear that one in the head. No. Nope. Don't so, know why. Yeah. So to note, I mean, Lucas Allen, we, we mentioned not a lot of experience out there right now because of the sample size. We haven't seen him. And you have to think, oof, I mean, in this situation with an inexperienced catcher, that's in there for a strike. You know, he's calling the game. Fun fact, catchers actually have an earpiece. Yep. And they are getting the signs and everything relayed to them from the dugout, from the staff, coaching staff. And then they relay the signs to their pitcher. So it helps out the younger guys like Lucas Allen, who might not have a ton of experience. 2-1 delivery is swung on in the dirt and missed. 
Stopped in front by Allen. He's able to keep that corralled. So 2-2. Two -two. And a chance here for back-to-back punch-outs for Cole Hauer. Here in a 14-1 ball game. And the top of the sixth. Putting a zero on the board here in the sixth inning would go a long way. Well, I don't say a long way, but it will go a way for UNC. I mean, you know, we were talking about Lucas Allen, the redshirt junior, actually does have a decent amount of experience. Back in 2019 for the Bears, started 35 of the games, saw action in 39. 2020 started in just five games, played in only nine. And then back last year in the 2021 season, didn't play at all. That was a redshirt year. Not sure if that was because of injury, what was going on. but So he does have experience for the Bears, just not as much as of late. Not this year. I mean, well, you got a f guy in front of you and Josh Glenn. Who yeah. Was, he was named one of the top 50 catchers in all of college baseball. Yep. So I, it's going to be tough to, to get reps. Well, hey, that's good to know. Yeah. That's why I got you next to me, man. Yeah, I was looking looking into it, and I was like, oh, he was, he's been here for a little while. Yeah. So my apologies, Lucas Allen. Did not, did not mean to bring it down that way. Two men on. There was a walk there while we were talking. So man on first, man on second, one out. We really haven't seen a lot of plays out in the field. Okay, so does this make sense? Not a lot of defensive assists have yes. been, out, been done out there because not a lot has been hit on the ground to the infield. Yeah, exactly, and – this is where it gets it gets tough as a fielder, especially an outfielder. And you hate to say it, but you almost just get bored. Yeah, I mean, out there. Th there's a reason that they say he gets caught out there picking daisies. Yeah, there's a, that is a legitimate saying for outfielders because yeah. you do you you get out there, you kicking get around the grass, in your own thoughts, kicking yeah. around the grass. Where am I going for dinner? You know, things like that. Yeah, it can definitely get difficult and catch you off guard when something comes your way. And it's a little bit easier to stay alert in the infield. Especially yeah. when you have base runners right in front of you. You're kind of yep. more into the game. But, yeah, in the outfield, especially when you're not getting any plays hit to the mm -hmm. head out there, you're just standing around. And Is that what you did a lot in baseball? Just kind of – You know, I was at first base most of the time. Oh, okay. So, so, you... so fortunately, I was either on those long innings, I at least had someone to hold on or – Yeah, yeah. Kind of could talk with. You're kind of forced to first base. Yes. One, two, delivery. Swing and a miss. Another strike out there for Cole Hauer, second of the inning. Fourth total for this Bears pitching staff. Two down. Brings up Will Bush, catcher for the Bison. So 14 hits, 14 runs for the Bison. And, you know, they went scoreless in their first two innings and a three-run third, a five-run fourth, a six-run fifth. Let's not, let's not keep that going. Let's no not, seven yeah, run no, we don't, don't want a seven run sixth. First ball comes in low. Good start here to the sixth, at least, all things considered. Checks the runner and delivers and outside and low. Thought about it, but did not get the bat off his shoulder there from Bush. Peter Brookshaw on first. Jack Simons or er, on second. Jack Simonson on first. Who's on first? Oh, I knew you were gonna do it. I knew it was coming. The two zero count. Two outs, and that one low in the zone, strike. Needed that one. Trying to get a clean inning here, Sam Kohlhauer. 24 pitches in his outing today. Low in the zone, that one a worm burner, fastball low. Three and one.
So 3-1 count, two outs. Cole Hauer, a long look in, gets his sign. Checks the runner at second and delivers. This one poked out in a right field. Fair ball. Barely a fair ball. That's going to score two. That's no. going to score one. And I, th I was thinking two as well, but King picked it up and got it in quickly for a an RBI double. And that would advance the runner on first all the way around to third. So Simonson able to get to third. Kept, kept him there. I think that was a good idea. Fielder, one, so a 15 to one ball game now. Not up on the board yet, but that should be the 15th hit for the Bison. It is. Benefit of the doubt. It's yeah. been a long day. That one turned and crushed. But foul. foul. Right? It's just a long strike. Long, long strike, though. <laughs> Car just ran over the ball. Yep. Yeah, Huggins got a round on that one. Yeah, a little early. Thankfully. So, 0 1 count ahead of the hitter. Two outs. One run across. Swung on and foul tipped. Back to the fence. To make it two strikes. So, 0 2 count. Cole Hauer has two strikeouts. Could he have an unconventional strikeout to side? That's exactly what I was just looking at. <laughs> it, it counts, right? Well, th th that's actually somewhat of an argument I've heard between broadcasters is do you call it? Striking it out the side. Hey, you know what? He struck out the side. Let's let's get something going. Sure. Striking out the side there. Works for me. So that's it. One run comes across. 15 to 1 ball game. And we'll be back after this. The UNC's prepared me for leadership roles by pushing me out of my comfort zone. My coaches and my professors wanted to hear about my passions, my goals, what my family meant to me, what my mom in particular means to me. And I think that was the most impactful thing to me. And it made me feel like I was going to a place that would see me more than a student. They want you to be the best you can be. I'm on the leadership council here and I've started every game. If you believe in yourself and you keep pushing yourself, you're gonna shock yourself with the things that you can achieve. Babe, it's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Back here in Greeley and a new pitcher out there for North Dakota State. Skyler Reedinger. Reedin Reedinger. One of those two. One of those two. We'll get it right, we promise. But he's out there. Freshman, right-handed pitcher. Coming in in a... Well, he's just going to keep it where it is, basically. So he's coming in, the right-handed pitcher. He'll be greeted by the top of the lineup. Jake King, Shaden Kubo. And Josh Glenn. And they now have, or Jake King will be coming up for his third at bat. So we had that whole spiel in the last inning about how Kubo only had one at bat, but that was all false, pardon us. And it is Skyler Reedinger. Reedinger. All right, there we go. We want to make sure we get these guys right, you know. So Jake King stepping in for the third time today here in the bottom of the sixth. 0 for 2, as are many of his teammates. So let's see what Reed and Jerk can do out here. The freshman right-handed pitcher, his first pitch, and that is swung on an owl, fouled off the ankle of Jake King. And he'll take a quick little second. 
It's one of those where Rub that one out. It, hurts, yep. it hurts really bad, but you don't want to show pain. No. No weakness, right? So he's sitting in there just just stomach probably in knots. Yep. <laughs> but out on the outside, cool. I mean, he, he's all right. Calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, no. Uh, a lot of guys wear that, that shin guard that goes over the foot these days, but not seeing it from King. 0-1 delivery. This one fouled back to make it 0-2. So aggressive is King. So 0 2 here to the leadoff hitter. Reedinger delivers. This one swung on and fouled off down the left field line. Looks like there's another arm getting warm out there. And at this point, for the Bison, they might just be trying to get people work. Yeah, down there right now is uh, Joey Danielson, a right-handed pitcher junior. He's also a catcher. You don't often see that. You don't often see a pitcher and a catcher. No, it's not not a normal not, combo. Not common. Outfielder pitcher, yeah. I mean, because that's just arm strength. Yep. You know? One and two count to Jake King. The last one came in outside the zone. That one high to make it two and two. So Reedinger, nine innings pitched coming into today. So he's given up four okay. runs. This one's sent into right field, and that will get down. King on his horse. Is he going to stop? He will. So he'll stop at the leadoff double. Get something going. Got to get something. And, you know, <laughs> in the past few innings, it's been a leadoff hit or a leadoff base runner at least. It has been. But they've been stranded out there. The last – that's four innings in a row now. So looking back to the third, we had a leadoff double, then leadoff single, leadoff single, and now another leadoff double. N nothing been able to no. come around so yep, far. Not though. able to get anybody around. Their only one run scored is off the solo home run back in the first from Shaden Kubo, who's coming up to bat this now. This guy right here. So Kubo with a man in scoring position. Reed and will pitch out of the stretch. Gets his sign and delivers this one high and inside. Going back to what I was saying, nine innings pitched. He's given up four earned runs, so of course he has a, a 4.00 ERA. Seven runs total, nine strikeouts, and no walks. So imagine that if he won a complete game as a starter. And he has had two starts. This is his first relief appearance. Kubo not happy with the called strike on that one. Thought that was inside. Yeah, a little breaking ball inside. Probably could have gone either way. Another breaking ball and another one called strike. And Kubo, <laughs> Kubo kind of froze. Oh, he didn't like that one. No, not at all. He's like, Blue, come on. We're down 15 to 1. <laughs> Give me something. Oh, goodness. And I had to correct myself there. It was not two starts for Reedinger. It's two saves for Reedinger. S's, you know, it can mean anything. That they could. And all these stats pages are always configured differently. Yep. So you have to kind of, is that a start? Is it a Can't save? Make, you can never make them all the yeah. same. Yeah. I wish we just had some consistency across the board. <laughs> you're, you're asking a lot there. I know, right? 2-1 count, or 1-2 count, should say. I'm all over the place. King on second. Kubo swings on. This one sends it to shallow center. Backing up, trying to get it. It'll actually be the right fielder coming in to grab it. So making the play is Simonson, and King will stay at second. Kubo definitely showing some frustration frustration after he popped that one out. He threw his bat and actually ended up going all the way back into the Bears dugout, bounced that far. So definitely not saying that was intentional for no, him by no, any means, no. but just the frustration he flung his bat and didn't hit anyone, so no harm done. This is the third. We talked about how leadoff hitters get on and have not come around to score. Third inning in a row that the fourth inning in a row yep. that we've gotten a leadoff hitter on, but this is, I believe, the third that the next hitter popped out shallow. Yes. 
This one chopped to third base, and it's got some crazy hops. Not able to field it down there is Charlie Hesse, and that'll be, I'd have to say, probably an error. I, it, had some, I, it had some weird hops, though, so either way. I think it's going to go as an error, but that's just, that's a tough play there by that, Hesse. Yeah, I mean, it had that thing hopped all over the place. We will let you know on that, though, when we get the official scoring coming through. Jake Bannister getting in there to, to get a pinch hit. Hitting in place of Cade Moeller. Designated hitter. Not a bad guy to get in there. I mean, not a lot of at-bats, but two home runs. The kid's got pop. Yes, he does. Takes a shot at the first one off the end of the bat. Back behind is in foul. And that last hit did go as an error on Charlie Hesse. So an error, and Glenn is on first. King on second. Jacob Bannister up there. Bannister hitting an even 200. Two home runs, three RBIs, three hits, and 15 at-bats. Of course, he is the son of Major League coach Jeff Bannister. Was the manager of the Texas Rangers for a while. Took them to postseason a few times. He, just he was actually a volunteer coach here at UNC until just a couple months ago. Took a position with the Arizona Diamondbacks. O2 count to Jacob Bannister. One out here in the top of the bottom of the sixth. Swung on and missed right through the off speed stuff. So strikeout swinging for Jacob Bannister. He'll take a seat. Second out of the inning, and that'll bring up Lincoln Turner. In a game like this, you have to kind of think of things to to bring up. And I like to bring up the point about Lincoln Turner's bat. He has the axe handle. He knock, does, yep. Which is something that a lot of hitters are going to. Yeah, it's kind of this new up-and-coming thing. Mookie Betts really kind of made it popular. Mm -hmm. And he actually started – guys were asking about it, right? So he started giving his bats away to other players. He yep. gave, gave one to George Springer, gave one to a few other guys, and now it's really made its way around the league. And it helps because there's a bone down there at the bottom of your of your palm that's very yep. easy to break. And when you get surgery on it, 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 it just puts you out, right? Yep. And it's very easy to break. A lot of people break it just when they fall and, and stop themselves, right? And for somehow the old knob of a bat, when you swing – and you, it hits a certain way, you could break that bone. Yep. So a lot of these players are switching to this axe handle bat, which apparently helps with that. And we're seeing that here from Lincoln Turner. Obviously on your screen, really hard to tell. Yeah. Can't yeah. see much of that, but just have to take our word for it. Yeah. Sometimes we know what we're talking about. Every once in a while, we know what we're talking about. It's hit or miss. Hit or miss for sure. Speaking of hit or miss, it is a 2-1 count to Lincoln Turner. Two outs here in the sixth inning. That one on the outside corner for a strike. Two and two. Turner steps back into the box. He's 0 for 2 today. Of course, we talked about he hasn't had a lot of reps out there. Makes contact here, sends it straight up. And this is just what we've seen from the Bears today. Looking for it, and again, not able to pull that one in, though. Almost had another great play made by Will Bush there, but not able to come back and get that one. And I know Lincoln Turner can be grateful for that because that would have been the second time that he's fouled out to the catcher. And I just, I don't know what it was, but as a hitter, there's nothing more than I hated. I hated fouling out, but fouling out to the catcher was always just the worst feeling. Yep, that and then uh, strikeout looking. That was a yep. bad one, too. And the worst part is strikeout looking, you usually got talked to when you went back to the dugout, too. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two men on. Swung on and chopped up the middle, picked up, and an easy flip there to sack it. And that is the third out here in the sixth inning. So we're headed to the seventh here, 15 to 1. We'll be back after this. 
I think that UNC has given me the tools to make an impact on my community. My major here at UNC is political science. I am very excited that I've been able to be a part of Student Senate and I can't imagine my life without that impact and making those changes. I got so much more out of this experience than just a degree. I'll be leaving here a better person, a more engaged person, more educated person, someone who's more caring for others. Playground. Let's do it. Back here for the top of the seventh inning. A couple of defensive changes here for the Bears. At second base now in place of Shaden Kuba, we have Carson Gross. And at third base in place of Chase Crummer, we have Aiden Leahy. So two defensive changes, but no change on the mound. Sam Colehauer still out there. It took him 29 pitches to get out of the last inning. And Heat struck out the side, technically speaking. Struck out all three batters. He did give up two hits, a run. One of them earned, or it run, it earned, I should say. Gosh. And a walk. Number three. Leading it off for the Bison, number four. So Charlie Hesse leads it off for the Bison. Brock Anderson and Caden Schwabe will follow him. We actually had a defensive change last time out for the Bison. Didn't, didn't notice it. Got right past us. Zach Kluvers came in at shortstop. So he is actually who made that play, I guess, not Brookshaw. So you, we're, we're not right all the time. We're not right all the time. Just most of the time. 0-1, oh, and that one comes in inside, 1-1. One and one. Hesse's 2-for-2, two, two, two RBIs and two walks. A lot of walks today for this North Dakota State squad. Eight walks as a team. This one is sent fouled on the third baseline. And here's one that it, you hate to chuckle at it, but you're going to chuckle at it. So the score right now is 15-1. to one. Yep. A lot too little. Get this. Uh, the Bison have left 11 on base. It could be a lot worse. It could be worse. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they've it could be worse. Left them stranded with the bases loaded a couple of times. 15 hits, 15 runs for North Dakota State. This one lofted into right field. King drifting back and will make that grab. First out of the inning. Hey, uh, good news here for baseball fans up here in Colorado. I know it's spring training, but the, hey, the Rockies just took a one nothing lead over the uh, the Reds. So. Gotta love that. I was yeah. looking yesterday. I think they have two games they, today. They do. I they think have they're a, splitting up the squad. Yep. Yep. It's uh, Colorado versus Arizona in one, and Colorado versus Cincinnati in the other. Yeah. So the Cincinnati game, Kyle Freeland has himself a lead. <laughs> yes, and right now in the Arizona game, it's tied at zero. Oh. At the top of the second. Oof. Tough one there. Pinch hitter stepping in, Hunter Kep. We saw him yesterday getting in a start, and then he was a pinch hitter in the game on Friday. First pitch to him is a ball low. I always think those uh, split, I guess, split squad split games squad, yep. and spring training are interesting because it's like you, you just split up your lineup and half of them go to one game and mm -hmm. the other half in the other game. And I just went through and looking at – Looked at their lineup, and it, that's pretty much exactly what it was, is half of what you would kind of project the Rocky starting to line up to be. It was split up exactly. And it's interesting. This, I mean, don't want to get too far on off on this trail, but, it's, you know, it's baseball you know, coincides. Very short spring training. Ab absolutely. But I am I think the players like it, if we're being honest, because they all complain about how long spring training is yeah. and how they don't need it. Yeah. So I bet they're not mad about it. No, yeah. Give us a few games, like week, week and a half's worth of games, and – 
Let's get going. Season's already 162 games. <laughs> yeah, with a lot of doubleheaders this year. Yes. Because they're having to make up a few games because of the lockout. Kep has a 3-0 count. Make that 4-0. So a walk to Hunter Kep, the pinch hitter, with one out. Yeah, try not to stray too far away, but, you know, with the 15-1 to game, sometimes you got to find something to talk hey, about. Hey, you know what? All I'm saying is you, you left me up here on Friday – and that game was 20 to 3. I, I was, did. I was by myself, sir. I, you were. You were. I apologize for that. I got. I was requested you to do the You were called away. I understand. Game. You were called away. You know, it, it's it's all good. I forgive you, but it was, it was rough. They knew you could handle it. I appreciate that. It's a boat of confidence for me. Man on first, one out. First pitch, a strike on the inside corner to Schwabe. One for five. I mean, you're going to be leaving me here uh, up here alone a couple weeks from now. A couple weeks from now, yeah. Got some family coming in town. Got to, got to show them the beautiful Rockies, you know. Yeah, Rocky Mountain, something, you know, the baseball team. Though I wouldn't mind going to a game. Eh, interesting. We'll see. <laughs> one one count, one out. And again, we are in the seventh inning here. To remind you, it is a ten run rule here in the Summit League after seven. So unless the Bears come up and get five runs in the bottom of the seventh, it will be over. One-two count to Caden Schwabe. Man on first with one out. Not a lot of speed there on first, I'd have to say, but Schwabe has speed. So might not be a very easy double play should he give them the opportunity. This one fouled down and Man nice snag the out there in the bullpen, yeah. Over the wall. That's what you have him out there for. Stays a 1-2 count. Kluvers is on deck. Should we get to him as this one is line cut? And that'll be the double play. That'll work. So nice play out there by Carson Gross as he got his first action at second base, doubling up. The Bison to end the inning, 15-1. to one. We're heading to the bottom of the seventh. Coming to UNC, one thing that I really wanted to engage in was different leadership roles for professional and personal development. I'm currently the Director of Finance for our Student Senate. I am also in Beta Alpha Psi in the President's Leadership Program. Having all of these different opportunities across campus, I think is really gonna be helpful when I go into my career and into real world situations and also has been super empowering. That sweet morning dew, everyone look at you. And it was plain to see that you were my destiny. I will go where you leave. I'll be right there in a time of need. And when I lose my way, you'll be right there. New pitcher out there for the bottom of the seventh. Be Joey Danielson, a junior right-handed pitcher. He's also a catcher. We noted that when he was warming up out there. You don't see that often. You don't, yeah. see, uh, you don't see a guy splitting time between catcher and pitcher. Super unorthodox, especially anymore, but hasn't done a ton of catching so far this year, so primarily being used as a pitcher, but if you, they ever need him in a pinch, can can get behind the plate. Yeah, you know, hockey has the uh, emergency goalie. He might yep. be their emergency catcher. Yeah, because most of their catching has been done by Williams and Bush yeah. so far this year. Two pretty good uh, pretty good catchers, yeah, I'd say. Not, yeah, not bad when you have either one of them behind the plate. Definitely throws hard. At least he's warm-up pitches. I mean, and he comes at you. That, that wind-up, it's like I was saying, that's aggressive. Yeah. Not a comfortable at bat. No. To say no. the least. Aiden Leahy stepping in for his first at-bat of the day. It'll be him and then Lucas Allen on deck. He came in at catcher. Cameron Cromer in the hole. So we've seen Leahy a little bit this season. He's hitting 185, 27 at-bats, five hits for him as he sends the first pitch high. Very high in foul territory, drifting, drifting, and into the dugout. 
Well, almost into the dugout. Not sure how. I think he must have lost track of that one over there at third. Yeah, I think he thought it was going to be in the dugout, and then it came back and just unable to make the play. So Hesse, a good effort. Yep. But just a very tall strike, we should say, yeah. this time. Strike one. Real quick, going up on Leahy again, as I said. 27 at-bats, five hits, one RBI, a walk, and 11 strikeouts. 11 strikeouts and 27 at-bats. Swing and a miss through that one. That one's in the dirt. So 0-2 count to the leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the seventh. You know, we were talking about the Rockies in that last half inning. Might as well bring up that Kansas just beat Miami to advance to the Final Four. Oh, there you go. Not quite a close game, 76-50 to 50 Oof. final score. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's keeping an eye on that uh, that that pesky 15 seed. Yeah, St. Saint, Saint Peter's and Peters. USC. Com- or UNC. UN, the other UNC. Coming up we're, we're the UNC. They're the other UNC. Yeah. yeah UNC really is the UNC. One, two count. Swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Tagged him out for a good measure. And that's the first out here in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, quick basketball talk. Would love to see St. Peter's win that game. See, I'm super conflicted with that game because obviously we want to see the 15 seed advance to the Final Four because never been done before. Never even advanced to the Elite Eight. This is the first time in history. But also would love to see a UNC Duke Final Four matchup. Coach K in the national championship possibly, at least Final Four against UNC. Yeah. Oof, that's that. We were talking about this before the game, and they've never matched up in the tournament. Somehow, yeah. Which is somehow Duke and UNC have never been in, yeah. So I'll be fine with either outcome of that game, I think. Well, my teams were out immediately, so uh, I'm just here for good basketball. I haven't looked at my bracket in probably, when did the tournament start? About a week and a half ago? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was after that St. Peter's game. I think everybody just said, nope, we're, we're done. Yep, I'm good. 1-1 1-1 One, count to Lucas Allen. He steps in for his first at-bat of the day. He's hitting 200 on this season. Very limited five at-bats. Gets a hit here. Brings his average up, up to 333. There you go. He chops this one foul down the third base line. That's what you love about being early in the season or not having a ton of at-bats for him is one hit and you raise your average 133 points. Yeah, you're, you're a 300 hitter, you know. You mentioned though Lucas Allen, n- just because he doesn't have a lot of, of at bats this season, he's a he's a seasoned guy. Yep. Swinging a miss through that one though for his second strikeout of the inning, and now the Bears are one out away from being swept here at home by North Dakota State. That's the ninth strikeout for this. NDSU pitching staff. So Cameron Cromer going to step in, going to try to keep this game alive. Again, if you have missed it, 15 to 1, 10 run rule after seven innings in the Summit League. Cam Cromer steps in. He's one for two. Swing and a miss. That one is into the hole to make it a two hit game for Cameron Cromer. Gets the single there to keep us alive. He is the only player on this team, uh, on this line, in this lineup, I should say, for UNC with two hits. Uh, good day for him, I guess. Yeah, yeah, got to find the bright spot. Hayden Hyde's going to step in. He is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, left one on base. So far, a day that he would like to forget. And he's a terrific hitter. We've seen Absolutely. it all, all season long. He's just It's been good pitching from this, this staff of North Dakota State, and everybody's going to have a day. I mean, professionals have it. it. Even if you're a 300 hitter, that means you're only getting a hit one every three times. You know, so – and he is. He's well, he's well over 300. That one in there for a strike, one and one. So even with the 0-2-2 strikeouts, he's still hitting 321 on the year. Can't complain. Swung on and missed through that one. Make it one and two. Bears down to their last strike. Swing and a miss, and that will do it here from Greeley. 
Final after seven, the 10 run rule in effect, 15 to one, North, De North Dakota State comes into town and gets their first Summit League win and now they have their first sweep in the Summit League season as they take the series finale 15 to one as you see it there 15 runs on 14 hits and one error from the bison and the bears on the other side of the spectrum one run six hits and no errors after seven so a tough way to end your your uh home series and now next time you're at home is going to be april 15th so we're out on the road for a little bit for the bears so you won't hear us till the 15th yeah, a bit of an unfortunate game there for the Bears. It's, it looked like they were coming out to shake hands with the Bison and Bison going the other way. I don't think intentionally at all. No, I wouldn't believe so at all. I mean, in the first game, was there a little bit of, of jawing back and forth because of the home runs and staring into the benches? Yeah. There, there has, but there has been nothing else since then. No. It's, a, it's a long season. You don't want to get bad blood right now. But yeah, and I don't think this was intentional at all for, for the Bison, just something I, yeah. I, I noticed. And yep, so... Uh, well, I mean, yeah. Not a ton to highlight. For Not the Bears. a lot to highlight for the Bears for, here. It was a, the, yeah. I mean, we can talk about the Bison for sure. They absolutely yeah. deserve it. The player of the game most definitely is Logan Williams. I mean, you have two grand slams in a game. Some, yeah. There's got to be a no hitter thrown, and let it, you know that's the only way you're not going to be player of the game. Logan yeah. Williams, a terrific day at the plate. Uh, you just can't get better than that, to be honest. Eight RBIs for him, just absolutely incredible. Uh, final score, 15 to one here in Greeley. As I said, you'll hear us next. In a little bit, it'll be April 15th next time the Bears are at home. Take on South Dakota State. That's on a Friday, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. I'll be here, and we'll be joined by our friend Matt, and then he's going to have the rest of the series himself. We'll see about that Saturday game, though. But for today, final score, 15-1. to 1. And for everybody here on the, on the team, and for Matt next to me, I'm Bobby Morrow saying thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you in a couple weeks.